And what's up? Welcome to the Gaming Stadium presenting World Side Jack Link's World Side Rumble featuring Apex Legends. If I can spit that one out, lot to talk about. Forty five hundred dollars is on the line today as well. If I'm not mistaken, why not? I think I saw about forty two teams uh, already in locked and loaded to go for day one here. Yeah, everybody ready to hot drop right into the action. Want to get a giant go. piece of that prize point? Hold on. Did you say $4,500? Because if that's the Woo. case, I'm, I'm about to dip out right now and get a squad. I, I got some absolute <laughs> gunners ya. with me. I'm just saying. <laughs> You know what? I wouldn't blame you, man. For, for what's on the line today, and with the rate and velocity of how much TGS are putting into this, the kind of spots they're getting, man, this is going to be a meaty frag fest to come your way for the next 48 hours. We've got Dia coming tomorrow, but you're stuck with these two mugs for the rest of your Saturday. And we are ready to give you a show, or should I say talk over the players putting on the show today of the players we have here um i know there's a lot of pug rusters going into the mix with that being said 42 teams so much variety i'm excited to see what they've got yeah i mean apex legends you know it, it's 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 action-packed you have a lot of teams that are going to be dropping and playing for those 50 50 because this isn't like the algs where you know these teams no. have scrimmed they know where each other are landing They're, these guys might be playing each other for the very first time so they don't know play styles they don't know landing spots there might be chances where we have two three maybe even four teams landing in the same poi and almost having to fight out of it like ranked and although they might be looted and loaded there might be three of them heading to the lobby all of this going down to we about down to maybe about four or five five teams than that final circle it's gonna be so small everybody fighting for such small real estate and it's gonna be absolutely insane every life will matter here as we're dropping right into the rumble show your wild side it looks like we're starting yeah, on board here harder. with you know, the uh, 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 oh, hold on is this king's canyon we are we dropping it looks king's like it's me team okay all right i ain't mad i'm not yeah. mad at all i've been playing a lot of ranked and it's actually been on this very map right here so everybody should be familiar with this split because we have been dropping on it for what the last the last uh, few weeks or so has been past few weeks hasn't it let's get ready to rumble jumping straight into things for map number one a crucial game for all these players leave their mark on the map and uh, leave their mark on the opponent as well Wipe off those blood stains off their cheek and uh, hope to hit that next one tap, hit that next headshot as we dive on through and uh, these players get looted. Really excited to actually be playing on King's Can. This is going to be much different than some of your tournaments that you're seeing on a map like, for example, World's Edge, where there's a lot of resources, a, a lot of routes you can take to get towards that final circle. On, on this map, can, uh, King's Canyon, there's usually only about maybe two or three routes for you to get from those uh, from those longer uh, rotations to get over towards the hill. So we're going to see a lot of third-party situations. We're going to see a lot of fighting. You're not going to be able to get into those center hills as easily as you want it to be. So this, to me, my favorite those high defensive teams maybe teams that are rocking a little bit of a caustic who want to get into the early position as fast as possible and defend it before as opposed to teams that might be wanting to rotate late into the hill and maybe running into a choke point or a team that's gatekeeping them out of that situation i love that you give those breakdowns the analysis and uh, what team's going to be in paralysis as they come in to these battles up we go so early days though, right? So you're not going to see too, too much. And with that first game, just players being a bit methodical. And uh, how, how do we want to approach this? Why not? How do we want to go into your first battle? For a team yourself, what would be your first inkling? Are you going to be playing those outskirts and kind of take it nice and slowly? Or are you just going to jump into the, the heart of things and the thick of things? You know, as much as it sounds great to try to get into the heart of it and try to defend a particular position, I think that's going to have a lot of eyes trained on you. So I, I'm personally, I like playing a little bit more towards the edge. I like knowing that the my back is safe because usually I'm playing the edge of the storm and most of the time okay. that could be teams coming out behind me and I'm going to be rotating late towards those hills and then I don't have to worry about essentially what's in front of me. Now I will say, if you are playing that late, if you are if you are playing these late, uh, these late zones at the edge of the circle, you do run sometimes into a situation where you're getting gate kept and that's when you'll be tested that's when you'll be forced to fight so a lot of more aggressive teams you're going to notice play the edge of the circle they're aggressive they're confident in their gun skill where a lot of the, uh, the teams that really rely on that heavy eye yelling and want to defend they're going to try to get into the center get into those early spots as fast as possible and uh, 
you know, you know what I'm seeing on screen? I'm seeing team. I'm seeing a little bit of Team Liquid. I'm still a little bit out of Space Station Gaming. We have fun, which, by the way, he might be having fun, but the rest of the lobby will not if they oh. run into a gunfight against him. And we're already seeing a battle here on screen. Battle. A few players down. Make that two. Going right to town here. Back on toxins as well. Try and do as much damage as they can early and take out this squad. Not allow them to get back on their feet. Oh, 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 down into the trees as well, following all the way out of this one. This is a very interesting roster that you're seeing. I believe Diff is actually teamed up with, uh, I want to say, Shiv on one of the international teams. Then you have Chaotic, the former number one ranked Apex Predator, who, by the way, went over to Sweden and really showed off and showed out. And now you have Girl, who's also not only a content creator, but caster, but also a former professional herself. This Damn. is a solid squad that we have here, and they're already down one player, so they're going to be playing the rest of this as a duo. Hopefully they can get a Ooh, hold of that broken. bear. Hopefully that team is not gonna oh. run into girl double shot coming in with the center oh. and it's another 88 right to the dome girl it is absolutely out of control it's ladies night tonight and girl is going off sheesh goosebumps all over the place and uh headshots and armor breaks all over the place as well what a performance cool of a caster cool of a player i call him just a genuine gamer get it all done in that engagement and that is how you use a sniper rifle with this game I, I, I can't believe the game literally just started. Not only are we down to 13 mm. squads, but we already see some incredible Sentinel shots coming out of girl nine damage away from being able to upgrade to that purple shield. She's quickly going to go in and respawn her teammate. 13 squads remaining on the map, 38 players here, and we're already seeing some action here with Lobby A. By the way, two lobbies running, 40 teams so far, and we have Still two it. lobbies running at the same time. Oh, we do. Plenty of games to sit your eyes upon here in the Apex World for the World Rumble. Presented you by Jack Link, and uh, featuring Apex Legends. Why, of course, if you just join us, a few Sentinel lessons being put on by a girl here. And you gotta love to see it, and the, the engagements continue. That they do. We do see a Bangalore player trying to get out of the action. An Octane team feature and it's non-stop. We're actually losing their Mirage player. Lots of you don't really see Mirage lots of times in cop, but I guess you're seeing why. As he quickly goes down, we are gonna try to go in early for the rest. And I want the enemy team is gonna collapse on it. They have that information. Nades are going out, and it's empty name that we have here on screen. No, that is not a typo. That is their name. Empty name. <laughs> <laughs> they get the more and more original. Each day we go through esports, the sprays, the praise coming through. Empty name, looking to make their name in K number one as they go really into the heart of this battle and gonna go clean up as well. Squad wipe and uh, on to the next, they're gonna go. Great downs coming in out of empty name. Another Valkyrie goes down. Valkyrie usually utilizing her movement to try to get out of terrible situations, but it is empty name that hunts her down. That's the power of having a Bloodhound on your team. You're going to notice a lot of aggressive teams that are playing in these ranks. They, information is key. They want to get as much information as possible so that they know when they're getting aggressive, they're doing it correctly. They're taking the proper route. And that's one of the things that, that, a, Bloodhound, that a Bloodhound team composition is going to allow you. Meanwhile, our unorthodox mm. mirage composition here already down two players and we're seeing our octane player for non-stop l's uh not taking l's just yet but going to be forced to rat it out for the rest of the game hopefully they get down to the single digit placings so they get some good points on the board do you go back for those banners or do you abandon banners i think it's abandoned banners well what choice do you have to see how things went with that engagement i do think they got octane out of that was the speed Maybe a little too much greed on that gunfight. And you bring up such a good point, Mirage. In 2022 Apex, does Mirage have a home? Yes or no? Uh, you know, I love Mirage <laughs> as a character. I, I really do. And I, and I feel like in, in a lot of these situations, Mirage definitely can be helpful or be very deceiving, if anything. The problem is, is that there's so much of value 
that other legends bring to the table like for example for example right here right now we have oyo i, I think it's pronounced <laughs> who they have a valkyrie gibby and a caustic composition which are taking more with another fight downs all over the place but that valkyrie you're gonna want to give to your fragger they want to be as engaged as possible they want to put down shots stay alive take down height as fast as possible that's what a valkyrie does your fragger is going to be your valkyrie player because you can utilize their movement to give it even bigger advantage than their gun skill so uh, if i have right. a controller player valkyrie all you by the way that q does damage stuns your opponents it's so much value Valkyrie. it's absolutely crazy but then you have is. your defensive legend gibby gibby providing that bubble out of nowhere if you're in open space you're gonna be collapsed on that dome could be absolutely amazing also be used to close the distance on your opponent you can throw it as far as possible be able to get into their face without little damage possible and give me uh, and then obviously ultimate bombardment does maximum damage and you have caustic that ultimate defensive legend on top of his ultimate which does damage as well there's value there mirage simply doesn't add that Ooh, much great. value to the composition no, Mirage doesn't. Mirage was good at a time, was good at a point, but that point has been and gone. We're seeing two nice engagements here as fast as the eye can see. Just chasing, running and gunning his girl. And you're right, it is ladies' night. And drinks are free for this team. Who runs the world? girls and as of right now we have <laughs> team girl rocking double purple even having some gold armor oh. and the r301 getting some value one goes down the cost of trying baby. to engage but ends up getting put on his back oh. he's too big to be laying on his back like that Val <laughs> chaotic oh. much putting him absolutely down that's another squad wipe going in favor of team girl you already seen the kill leader chaotic with six kills right now and the 180, I don't know if you saw that, the spin, the slide and frags, combined with the 180 spin and frag as well, nothing can stop the girls right now. Talked about his ladies night and that this guy behind the bar and pour themselves drinks at this rate. It's like an open bar. And girls still rocking with the Sentinel. This is something we don't often see in competitive play. We've seen a lot of charge rifle play. We've even seen some 30-30 play for players that want to take that mid or long range engagement. Very rarely do we see the Sentinel come in action. It's awesome. When it's amped up, it can be a little mini Kraber. You will, you will yeah. get put down quick if you don't respect a good Sentinel player. And girl obviously has shown us this, just that. We're down to 10 squads. And maybe the team girl are still hungry. They still want to play with their food a bit more sniper versus sniper sentinels versus charge rifle but it's team girl that want to close the distance they do there's no distance between them and their opponents they just get right in their face making it really uncomfortable and screw personal distance look at this running right into the face with this peacekeeper there's nothing but peace and say she means nothing but pure raw firepower no peacekeeping allowed unless it's on their turn saying that oh Go get a little bit too hungry. One player's down. Overextended for one kill, but ends up getting third party by another team girl captain going down. We do see chaotic much and dip trying to form. They're trying to formulate a pinch so they can still put pressure on the enemy team and still pull off the res. And mind you, this res is an open field. There's no cover on that. Looks like they're gonna be able to get away with it. Meanwhile, space Ooh. liquid on screen we have our bloodhound player the final player alive here as fun has gone down and looks like our bangalore players also go down completely has turned into a banner phoenix being popped luckily space liquid is utilizing that third party situation to be able to get out of this not advantageous position the question is will they be able to go back and get banners or will they be ratting it out as we're down to six squads already Kelly. Circle. Still, it's quite a huge circle too. There, why not? That, that's what I see. We still, we still, we still have a decent, we still have a decent amount of real estate being put here. I mean, round two hill is just closing in, and this is playing more like a ranked lobby, to be honest with you. When you see competitive play, you normally will see. At this point, there probably still might be 16, 17, maybe even 18 teams left. But as of right now, this is playing more like a pub. Six squads and round two hill <laughs> is closing in. Mark, girl, marking this position right here. I'm loving this. This is a perfect angle to cut off the enemy team. They're in a non advantageous position. End up getting into a better one. And here comes the collapse. Coming to the team, girl. He's keeper out, laying down the law, putting the shiny to the body. Empty and name, then go. Girl quickly doing with the enemy. Empty name removed. Message deleted. Down to a near five squads. Seven assists right now. Seven assists with that sentinel. Let's check the squadron.
I can't believe it. Just so much teamwork coming in here from Girl. At this rate, if they can keep this velocity up, I see no reason at all why they don't take map number one. Not at all. And the crazy part about it is, I mean, the, what, how aggressive they're playing. I mean, even if they don't end up winning this game, they're going to be in first place based on kill yeah. points alone. The kill points, I mean, don't get me wrong. You can get as much as 12 placement points coming in out of getting first place. But the real value is combining that with kills. And as of right now, Team Girl has enough kills to probably fill up two lobbies right now. Or at least two <laughs> games. And it's only been one. It's not even done yet. Team Girl quickly now going to rotate towards the hill as fast as possible. And they're not looking for safety. They're looking for blood. <laughs> they are bloodthirsty as it comes, man. That's to be a blood town to be as bloodthirsty as they are. All decked out, all kitted out, and they get all the breaks out as well. Yeah, another armor break sounds. Used to hearing that from girl. Making all the moves. Oh, the jump pad as well. Combine that with some Valkyrie util. The aggression continues. Yeah, and it does girl gonna quickly uh, our team girl gonna quickly take hype, but diff ends up running into two players. Quickly rip down, gonna have get to out. play a cell to get back to the full shield. Notice how girl quickly baits and switch oh, oh. the body on the line. Beautiful unselfish play coming out of the cast, and now the diff was able to get the shield. Now he comes back and lays down the law with the flat line. Beautiful Man. play by the entire team right there. You notice diff got ripped a little bit and was forced again to play those shields, but girl putting her full shield body on the line to cover diff right there was a well-placed bait and switch coming out of team girl just like that we are down to four squads at the moment there's physically 10 players on the map and something tells me we're gonna be down to just one real soon from five to four can we see another more of those selfless plays you are so right in a nutshell that's how you need to be playing team team games period if it's valorant apex cs go you have to be selfless and exactly what worked for them there a little bit of a hyper extension over extension from diff but it doesn't matter when your teammate is going to be in there to save the day and everyone is a hero on this roster i think it's quite easy to say I'm gonna ask you jalapeno pepper original you have to choose one i'm choosing pepper i'm a classic guy oh come on you're being disrespectful let me tell I want the original flavor. I want to taste okay. that meaty Jack Lynx beef jerky. Jalapeno's mm. nice. Don't get me wrong, but to me, I want to taste the raw flavor. I'm not, put it this way. I'm not ordering a nice steak medi uh, you know, a medium well or well done. I'm ordering medium rare. I want to taste that meat. <laughs> mm. Get those flavors, man. Get those flavors in your belly. The wild side rumble featured Apex Legends here at TGS. Getting off to a roaring start. And you literally, it feels like you've been glued to go this entire game because they're just putting all, all the frags. It's their show. Shots coming in out of girls. Now notice that a team girl in a, a very non advantageous position here. They're on the low ground. Meanwhile, that team right above them, that ultimate height position. And when you see the start, the, the hill is obviously pulling away a little bit north. But if they choose to engage, they might end up losing this battle. I don't care how good your gun skill is. As long as the other team is competent and is able to play their height advantage, they're at they're not gonna be looking good. Team girl might want to rotate out of this situation and notice how they're quickly gonna ping the vault. You want to get that in the hands of a controller player the vault with controller is absolutely deadly i was i almost cried when they put it in the care package <laughs> a tear of joy or a tear of upset my friend oh uh, upset i i was a vault watch <laughs> let me say I, I i was nothing without the vault still am luckily r301 and charge rifle was working well for me but i missed my vault <laughs> the vault's been put in the vault for now to be taken out some other point. Oh, I remember exactly when the, the scout got put away. There was also uh, some tears when the G7 scout disappeared. But hey, we can't win them all. Can we see the beast of the hunt win it all though? Bloodhound's ultimate. Gives him that advantage because that speed, that vision. And looks like they're using it as well with the scan. Oh geez. Trying to close the distance here. We do see they're, they're, he they're already in the circle. So they're in a good position. But they want that ultimate position. They're in this building. So you're, so, you're seeing our Ash play actually get right in and go right into some Ash canisters or some caustic canisters. Forced to now back down and play the lives and reevaluate the situation a bit. They have two purples. One of their players still having blue armor here for the final three. It's obviously not going to be optimal for this oh, team. But we do see no. Bloodhound quickly taking that, uh, that accelerator. Wants to get that ultimate quick. The scans are nice. But when you combine that with the Beast of the Hunt, those scans come quick. And that is ultimate intel coming in. 
yeah, that really is ultimate intel that you have to just bank the intel, absorb it, and try and strategize to make that play. Not liking it for where the OGs are. Absolutely awful position, but for the girls too. Really a, a tough spot as well. Do we have some vision? Gets the damage off too. Add in to that 2,000 plus damage right now from Div. That's insane. 2,000 plus is his first game. Can I just quickly say, this is why I can't stand costing. You saw that screen clutter right there. Like, all that green stinky gas in there. It, nobody can see a thing. It, it's harmful. And then the costing has that giant... Of, I, I cannot stand oh, the costing. Damage. But uh, what I do love is those beautiful flatline shots coming out of Diff. We're going to be forced to play a Phoenix, but well played. Like you said, 2,200 damage coming out of Diff. He's, he's truly built Diffy. Yeah, no doubt, man. And no shot is what the other players are going to keep saying as well. See if little push action can happen with Wingman. Haven't seen too much Wingman action today. That traditional it's him, he's that shroud play. Just push the Wingman, hit it hard, hit him in the dome. <laughs> are these players going to be in the zone here, Tony? That they are. Everybody fighting out. And we have ND on the bottom right hand corner here. I believe that I believe that is Kumski, who I've seen him play plenty of times in the esports arena tournaments. An a, a excellent bragger, and also obviously has, has just plenty of game knowledge coming in, and obviously <laughs> knowledge in general with Seer coming in with the Q, able to light up everybody on the screen. And they want they want to hold in this building, or at least to be able to get rid of Team Girl. But they're being absolute nuisance. Two players with red shield, one on gold, the girl on the opposite side, and you have double reds and purple and both of these teams being very careful not wanting to make any mistakes showing each other respect in the in this 3v3 gunfight respect the gloves are still on no gloves are off just yet and it's down to the final three teams this would be the, the place that you'd expect perhaps to have a bit of disrespect a bit of bm but both these teams Nice and slowly, he's waiting for one, one, one player to make a mistake. This is the calm before the storm right here. This is where it is. Right here, you're, you're starting to hear again. There we go. The ultimate oh, no. comes in. We are seeing, but the team girl start to get collapsed on here, and we're actually going to go full screen onto them. Team girl defend this position. You saw how aggressive team girl is being, but I love the fact that they're able to switch things up in a, a moment's notice and slow the game down and play and play their advantage in the defensive position here, playing to their composition. But diff. Getting absolutely ripped, forced to back down, and while healing, ends up getting hit by the micro drones coming out of Seer. That's gonna force them to have to re heal again. Nades starting to fly. Team Girl are looking very uncomfortable in this position as we're moving uh, about 25 seconds going into that final zone. They're going to have to relocate. They're going to have to grind forward. And it's going to be very hard with three teams still on the map. Eight players, so one team isn't fully loaded just, uh, anymore or just yet. You talked about a composition and a position. I'm talking of the mission. They've got to keep their eyes on the goal of the mission. And they've got to get out of here. This is the worst spot we've seen so far. You talked to they're constantly aggressive, but they're pinned right now. We're seeing that gas come into play. I, I think the only thing stopping the team from getting pushed heavy is the fact that they're running caustic and both of these teams are very yeah. well aware of it. Nobody wants to push this uh, this center building with those ca with those caustic cans because not only that smoke actually blocking out every one of your sight lines, but it also does damage as well. And then with that damage, girl actually has an advantage because she can then see you with that threat detection right. view. But NDA, they're tired of playing games. You see them start to grind forward. Our Gibby player getting impatient. Nades are already out. Archstar flies one. That's going to force the team to relocate and force the back down. Even getting a hit marker quickly. NDA might be collapsing on this. They like, are. Looks like one is backing down. They're going to, the NDA going to slow things down just a little bit. But that's what coming in. Team girl, they have to get out of this building. They chase him after. They have to, and they do have to skyward dive available. I don't know where they're going to be able to use that. There's no windows. It's like a coffin right now for them. And they've got to escape this coffin. They've got to break out of the Undertaker. They've got to do something. We've seen the Seer all come in. That is not going to be good for Team Girl. Now they're oh, the push. Now all of their positions are being revealed here. Beautiful massive shots coming in. Lubsky, massive coming in yet again. Go. 63 and one going to go down. That's the captain, Team Girl. So now we have a 3v2 NBA. Well aware of it. So they're going to slow things down a little bit and make sure that they clear this. There's still one more team yes. on the map. And I wonder where the heck they are. Yeah, where are they ready? They're just watching this like a spectator sport right now. 
hanging out and enjoying the view, enjoy the frags. The massive comes through. The massive has been huge here for NDA. Okay, new player goes down. Most of you were able to pull off the revive on Turgo. Now it's NDA that are dropping oh. players left and right. Diffy gonna take to the skies. And this now is the, the play. final player alive. <laughs> down goes the Q. Ends up dropping us down to two Diffie? squads with the vote. Beautifully played by Diffy. Now going in for the revive. Finally, that final no shot. making themselves known. And it looks like NDA gonna steal away game number one. Beautifully played. Patience is key. And NDA showed us just that. Patience is key. It comes right down to the tooth and nail. Valkyrie versus Valkyrie as it would appear. Oh, that was such a close final fight. All in one building as well, Tony. All in one building. That's it. That's all you need. Like an arena fight. Wow. Team Girl. That they played absolutely lights out. Hyper aggressive. Got to that final circle position and knew that that was the position that everybody wanted to fight for. So being it able was. to switch from offense to defense was well played. But NDA playing right outside that building and not you know lots of times these teams they want to overextend they want to get aggressive they have the information so they want to collapse on it but nda say no let's take our time let's wait for that storm to start to fall in then let's start throwing nades force them towards that back building force them back towards the storm so that was easy damage coming in and then eventually Boys. nda just collapsing you're using the environment you're using the time you're using the map as almost like a, a 2v1 almost a 6v3 on your opponents because that that opponent is backing up towards the storm and you're collapsing on them. It was beautifully played by NDA. They felt the pressure. And hey, sometimes pressure can create diamonds, but sometimes it can burst pipes. Time and pressure. And uh, that time, we need a plumber. Before we go to man number two, the top four teams go back, recoup, heal their wounds, and uh, perhaps patch up some pipes before we get back to the World Rumble featuring Apex Legends brought to you by Jack Links. We've got some sweet giveaways going away on the chat as well. So uh, do keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. But before we get there, we're taking a short little time out and we'll be right back with some snacks, some frags and some facts, all part of the Apex World Rumble from Jack Links. Catch you shortly. Jack Links presents Messing with Sasquatch. Watch this. <laughs> Don't mess with other snacks. Choose Jack Link's jerky made with 100% beef. Jack Links presents Messing with Sasquatch. Watch this. <laughs> Don't mess with other snacks. Choose Jack Links jerky made with 100% beef.
ladies and gentlemen we are back with some more apex action brought to you by jack links don't forget to feed your wild side you got to let it out sometimes a lot of you guys feed it. are being contained and being calm and, and cool collect just feed the wild side grab yourself some beef jerky get in the action let's take a look at the leaderboard let me tell you one, one on, team that was feeding peek. their wild side was team girl they were literally Woo! all over the place all over the map getting ultra aggressive because of that even without pulling off the win in game number one they still take the placement points and the kill point sitting with 24 total and that has to be big with the 15 kills that has to be a large reason why they were able to steal away our number one spot after game one. 100%. Uh, I just got some flashbacks of for another TGS Apex tournament where Furia absolutely annihilated. And I think that's the only score that I've seen surpass outside of what we saw from Girl, Hangry, Hungry, whatever they were. They brought everything out for game number one. And hopefully that sets the tone for the games to come. Uh, maybe a bit of a high expectation to expect the 24 every single game. But as a starting president, that gives I mean, a vibe of intimidation, I think, across all of, of Lobby A. That's that's scary. Yeah, to put that in perspective, like the last Apex tournament I casted, the, the end result was 74 points for uh, for one team and that was topping Whole the line. That was topping the lobby. That was very good. They played lights out. If Team Girl continue on this pace, they will end with 125 At points. That, 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 I mean, again, not to say that that's going to happen, but I'm saying that that just to put just to put some weight behind what we're saying, having 24 points in a single game and without not even pulling off the win is absolutely crazy. And I'm excited to see what Team Girl have uh, and keep bringing to the lobby. We have plenty of good roster that we saw, even NDA, which by the way stands for no Devos allowed. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The Devo is a very interesting weapon. I'm right on NDA side. No Devos like no put Devos. it away. Get, get it out of there. Get it out. Get it out. <laughs> get, get out. Get out. Get out of here. Get off my lawn. Um, if you just joined us right now, welcome to the Jack Link's World Side Rebel featuring Apex Legends. We have just under five thousand dollars up for grabs today over this two day of frag fest. And indeed, no Devos allowed. Well, that's for the players to choose if that's allowed. But we get things on the way into map number two. But from what happened at the end of that game, let's just talk about that last engagement there it was girls game it was girls lobby entirely for map number one but out of nowhere nda came in as you mentioned for that breakdown just at the end of that last segment from the shadows crept in and absolutely destroyed so if that can happen again nda might be able to snag and remain on that first place at the podium but uh, game number two let's see what it spells as i said before we went to break Pressure can create diamonds, but it could also burst pipes. And let me tell you, diamonds were not a girl's best friend in that final engagement. No. NDA continued no. to apply pressure onto that choke point, keeping that team sandwiched in between the storm and them, them and NDA themselves. So it was well played, but now we're dropping into yet another lobby here, going right back into Kings Canyon. And we're going to find Woo! out who's going to be the kings and or queens of game number two. Who's going to get that crown, baby? Who is going to be crowned the winner of day one? Doesn't matter because day two is where all the, the gold, the diamonds, the precious loot will be. Give you some info of how you can see some fun stuff in chat. How you can get your hands on some swag or courtesy of chat links there. Some Apex coins sound like uh, something you like. Well, stand by and uh, we'll give you details of that. But the initial loot, finding some upgraded armor here, is going to be first step here for free agents and mind you we do have two lobbies running simultaneously 40 teams that are playing with a top 10 of each team will advance into tomorrow's qualifying Are event so this is going to be dudes. lobby b we're not going to see team girl we're not going to see you know diffy and all all of the uh, big uh, big heads that were in lobby a but i will say lobby b is probably stacked as well i was taking a look at the leaderboards and there Looking was plenty like of points to go around right right now we're on board with free agents rocking that you know that fundamental right now valkyrie caustic and gibby composition you you have valkyrie's ability well which is that uh, skyward dive that can get that rotations into the storm as right. fast as possible out of a bad situation and then you have gibby and caustic whose value go up and up as time goes by the smaller that circle gets the more value their ultimates become and talk value from free agents they are top of the the scoreboard right now top of the leaderboards for lobby b so great plus place to start to kind of get a, a taste of the composition of a top tier 
legend loadout. As we move on, have a look at uh, the sub kitties here. The Valkyrie, the Wraith, and uh, going to see the Watson as well. We are talking about Wraith a bit earlier on, weren't we? How Wraith has made a bit of a resurgence with Octane, taking a bit of a backseat in, in the pro scene. Wraith, a classic, an absolute legend, and still stands so strong. Those abilities, that agility, you could do anything with Wraith. Yeah, I mean, no normally your first two are going to be Valkyrie and Gibby. You know, Gibby has almost 100% pick rate, and Valkyrie's pretty close to it. I would say may maybe in about the high 80s, if not low 90s, coming mm. in out as far as pick rate. After that, that third legend is all about what you what your identity is as a team. If you're a defensive composition, you know, Caustic can provide so much value where you can turn any room into a fortress. The ultimate defensive composition usually runs through Caustic, but then if you're you know a high fragging team you know i'm thinking you want to play the likes of what we see right now with knights of nessie maybe you want a bloodhound who maybe to give you that intel so that you can get more aggressive or have a rate where you can drop those portals and get into a situation or get out of it if you start to lose those engagements so uh, you know uh, it really depends on what you want your identity to be as a team and that's one of the things that adds so much uh, you know so much value so much volume to oh, apex is the fact that it's almost oh, like a chess geez. game with it with how you can and play the game do you want the chess game with an energy drink or do you want the chess game with molasses that's your choice and it, it really is isn't it we saw definitely a slow but action-packed game for game number one of lobby a lobby b very similar feel from the stats got a clear few runners for that top three podium or top three doesn't matter it's about the top 10 teams of each lobby to, to be going through to day number two to the money day and Sluggish start and uh, not really too too much action so far. Just the looting, the looting, and give me the loot is what all these players are yelling. And can I fanboy real quick? I think I saw the NV Messiah is in the lobby right now. Another former number one Apex Predator in the lobby right now. And it's Faith as well. So we have a Messiah and Faith coming in on the same team. This is this is not a squad that I would want to run into. The, the the thousands of hours that they've put into this game as far as experience. They know every god spot. They know every position that they want to take. And you notice how they're a high intel team. They they know the god spot they want to be in. So what are they running? A low buff. They don't want to get aggressive and put themselves into into a bad situation. What's one way that you can make sure that you always have great loot? Incorporate a low buff. Once she drops that black market boutique, she could then Easy, loot a sing, almost a whole area in one singular spot that provides you uh, you know unlimited ammo that provides you nades so you can start engagement to make sure you get out of it it's just so much of value that comes with a loba can you not tell that i'm a loba main myself i was gonna say <laughs> have you got a t-shirt that says loba with a heart around it because i wouldn't be surprised but you're right though and to combine along with the black market boutique the burglar's best friend simply put it gives you that ash like ability to get in to get out if you need to and just laugh your way to the bank and give all of your team that sort of rank up that level up with all the weapons really is a, a nice surprise when loba just whips out the black market you're like yes please and thank you moved on from there though we'll have a look at uh, team faith at this time and watson yeah. having a gander and seeing what's available but just a, a hike right now in, in the sunshine just beating down and can i can we just can i just talk about the synergy with this squad because i talked about how valuable loba is but Shoot you know text. when you combine loba with the valkyrie so what does valkyrie want to do she wants to take height she jetpacks on top of a building immediately takes height what can Loba do as well? She could bracelet on top of a building and take height right with Valkyrie. That's a nice Damn. little duo right there. Then you have the then you have the Horizon. What is Horizon's ultimate ability? Chucks in that here. black hole and sucks the enemy defense in and force them into a position that they don't want to be in. What do every single Horizon player need? They need nades to combine with that ultimate. What does Loba do? She gets you nades. The synergy on this squad. <laughs> like I, I didn't see it at first, but like I'm looking at it now. Like why is this not? A comp raw strike. I, I, now, granted, you don't have a Gibby, so they're really a, a tough to defend against ultimate bombardments and really hard to, uh, you know, close the distance on an opponent or create, uh, create cover in an area that doesn't have it. But sure. I will say the amount of firepower that you can bring with this squad, I think, I think we might end up seeing, we might end up seeing this composition a little bit more in competitive play, especially with those high aggressive teams, because there's a lot of synergy across the board if you really dig into it. 
Let me one up you. Let's talk about maybe uh, a Loba, an Ash, and a Valkyrie. That is aerial ability. And you talk to the different clubs, there's so much you can do in Apex. And truthfully, you can't go wrong unless you choose Mirage in 2022. No, no joke. I, I think that's the only thing you can do to maybe put yourself in a bad position. I know that are experience, but experience is what these players have. And we're seeing the reset come in here as Valkyrie is going to give a reposition. A little fun fact as well, in Lobby B, we have a team called D. If that means anything to you, it's Diegosaurus. It's uh, the, the, oh. the big, yeah, Diegosaurus, the, the big stream up. Is, uh, is I didn't even notice that. Oh, I, I, yeah, I was yeah. watching a lot of Diego Soros, like uh, with his one v. He'll, he'll do like these one v three pub challenges, and oh my gosh! Like, and I will say that sometimes I, I can almost make an argument that one v three pub challenges are is almost harder than ranked at a predator level. Like it, no matter 100%. what, if you're one person at the fight, three players it doesn't matter if they're competent or not. It doesn't matter if they're on your skill level or not. They have tripled the armor. They have tripled the, the triple the resources you do. One v three is so hard to do and uh and diego source was so excellent at being able to fight them off and actually even win games it was really impressive to watch on the kill feed you see envy messiah run through the lobby and they what's sniping. good letting us know what's good but just sitting on top of the map raining down hell on an enemy team with wingmans having oh and it looks like they want to get that intel now they're going in for the beacon lots of times you'll see gibbies drop their dome to make sure that their valkyrie player can not only get that beacon but do it safely but then not get sniped by a kraber or a charged sentinel which can grief their game completely Take it nice, easy. What's good? If they were to say what's good, it wouldn't be what's good. It'd be what's good. They're just chilling. They're not really trying to <laughs> press or pray too too much. Sub kitties though, looking to get right into to business here. You did mention this with some of the, the lineups that you've seen. Oh, good bit of damage at the crack there as well. They're going for the they're going for the play. That they are nades starting to fly in. They're trying to grind that contact team outside the snare. Look at that. Dropping the ultimate just in case the defensive bombardment does come in. And they can utilize to get those get down. to get those shields back. But they end up cracking right into some early damage. The caustic canister absolutely keeping sub kitties out. But again, that I, I love that generator coming in to, to regen their shields. And now with some chili tacos, take height and try to find a different angle. Or just lock that team in with the water. Lock him in. Lock him in and throw away the key. Best way to get your victory. Not looking like it's going to be a victory at this rate, though. These players down. So much to do with the peacekeeper. I think a little too much here, Tony. Chili Tacos using two players trying to go in. Here's the rest coming in. Trying oh. to take advantage of that. Sadly, was in a 1v3 scenario regardless. And they're going to get taken down. And Team Faith wanted to introduce themselves to the party. They heard all of the gunfight. They heard all the commotion. They say, hey, oh, no way this is going down without us. Max on the third by cracking two players. Coming crack, in crack. with havoc and wreaking havoc at that. Whoa, 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 whoa. What a push. And uh, that's the way to get that kill leader. Three for me. Yes, please. And thanks as Team Faith. Have faith. We're on the way. Team Faith coming in with the third party scenario with perfection. Taking us, down, taking us down one and bringing us down to 11 squads. A little bit of a slower game than we saw in game number one of, mm -hmm. of Lobby A. But either way, we are still seeing some valuable Apex being played at the moment. Look at all those boxes. How do you get out of this building? How, how do you even get, get out of out. that doorway? Oh, oh, hold on. Hold on, Team Faith. They're not out of the woods just yet. There's a team that wants the third party situation themselves. But do they know that they're going to be going up against Team Faith, which is a squad I would not want to challenge to a 3v3 gunfight? No, I wouldn't. I was about to say, those death boxes are stacked like pizza boxes on my gaming desk. <laughs> Blocking everything. Gonna block their entrance or exit as well, though. So they're kind of stuck being filtered out the bottom if they do want to get out of that building. And a lot of gunfight. Oh, there you go. Finding their exit, they will. It looks like they're going up against U2 Easy, but U2 Easy not wanting to engage all the way in that gunfight. They're definitely keeping their distance here as that circle started to close in. We are moving on to yet another round. Like I said before, a little bit of a slower lobby, still having 11 squads remaining, where the last lobby we saw played a little bit more like a pubs match with how fast. I think we were, we were like down to six squads after round two. It was kind of ridiculous. I was expecting that to slow down. There's no way that pace can continue. No way. I do see a care package, though. 
that might uh, help increase the pace, increase the momentum of these teams. AHP though. Stop halted and faltered. This isn't looking good. That's not a Gibby player going all the way down to one shot, and then one of their players going down. Free agents look like they are on the hunt at the moment here. Looks like they're eventually going to collapse. We just still have a minute and 36 seconds worth of round three, and they still have to be aware. I mean, I mean, there's still 11 squads on the map. If they make too much noise, there's a high chance that they could be third party by a whole other squad. And the last thing you want to do is throw away your entire game for just one kill or just two or three kills. You want to make sure that you're playing for these end games. You want to combine those placement points with those kill points so you're able to right. maximize your value on each and every one of these leaderboards. 12 kills in game number one for, for free agents. This game looking a little bit more quiet for them. Haven't really perhaps been blessed or gifted those kind of advantageous positions. The zone just might not have worked with them. And now I'm just listing off the reasons as to why perhaps an Apex Gamer might make an excuse as to why something's not working. But that is the problem with the Battle Royale. There are so many elements to digest and to try and process to get yourselves into that good position. And this zone is, is looking uh, like a bit of an ugly zone, actually. It's going to pressure them in real soon. And what's good playing that edge of circle that we talked about before here, making sure that anybody come in might be gate kept out and they'll have the advantage of that gunfight having to force that team out while that team is trying to force their way into the situation. I really like what's good positioning here. And now they find yet a Gibby player but by themselves starting to, he's trying to get, he's like, hey, this is the only way I can get into the circle, guys. Would you please let me in? And the bouncer's just keeping them out. Like, Absolutely not. Absolutely have you, not. <laughs> have you got an extra 50? I didn't bring any cash. Well, you can't come in. That wasn't part of the deal. My friends didn't tell me about this, but that's exactly the truth that there's being dished up in. What's good, just hitting and hoping, spraying and praying, trying to get something done. But the error maneuver from Valkyrie, from AHP, that's going to get him out. One way ticket. See that, that see that team is thinking on five levels ahead. They're they are th they're th they are absolutely thinking on a thousand level IQ by being able to valk out of the situation. It tells me that they had their jack links this morning here. Pop yes, sir. Full of protein. Make sure you guys are getting. There's no way that you're gonna be able to IGL properly. There's no way you're gonna be able to play at the top of your game if you're not munching on some jack links. Get yourself together. I don't know what you're doing. You're, you're darn straight, brother. It's jacklinks.ca, jacklinks.ca. Level up your stacking game and feed your old side with that original protein level up. I will give you some info shortly as well. How uh, maybe you get some Apex coins courtesy of Jacklinks. In the meantime, though, we're still just sitting over the top 10 teams. You mentioned a slower game. This most certainly is such a calculated game from all teams here. Really, really slow. Just uh, not wanting to make a mistake and just get a good start to day one. AHP down to two players still here, but you notice that they're quickly taking the accelerators for Valkyrie. You want to make sure they have that that skyward dive as fast as possible, especially because as as a as a duo, like obviously you can make some things happen, but you're at a disadvantage no matter what gunfight you engage in. So if they start to get pushed, their best play would be to back out, bubble, and get out of the situation like we already saw them do one time. Speaking of speaking of bad situation, Knights of Nessie. Still having a player with white armor right now. This is not looking good. That they have to upgrade that. 25 damage getting blue, but eventually even blue's not gonna be enough. Eventually, you're gonna be purples or more going into this end game. Uh, hopefully, Knights of Nessie can win this gunfight coming up. That's obviously gonna come up very soon here. So they can upgrade their armor and be able to advance forward 86 coming out of the wingman from Rodney Dog. I know you like that cuppa. Oh, I love those wingman shots, man. You know I like those precision. Precision is key when it comes to these kind of gunfights and a late game victory. My, my biggest thing, though, I, I'm going to go back to that Valkyrie point. Is your Valkyrie on white armor? Not good at all. We've moved forward, though. Knights of Nessie. Can they get messy? Can they cause a storm with a stir over in the caves here in the reclaimed forest? I love the fact that they have a bloodhound that was able to reveal all of the traps in front of them. The sad part is they still end up running into some of them and still end up getting ripped. One player goes down quick, and that's going to be Hamburger Helper Glove going down as quick as possible. It looks like Valkyrie going to quickly join them, and it looks like they're oh, going to no. spend the rest of this game in the lobby as they were hunted down by what's good. That can't be good. No. Nope. That's uh, it's good for one team, and what's good? It's gone from a what's good to what's good. They're feeling good. The bubble, they can feel a little bit better as well. Not a doctor, but Gibby can put down some support, offer a little bit of opportunity for healing. 
with this spot. It is anything but healing. Heal it. This is not looking good over by the truck. We do say ultimate. Oh no! Wise, and that's an absolute nuisance. They don't shoot it down, so instead they're gonna get a hell rain down on them, and they're gonna be the first one to go down this engagement. That's gonna leave Gold and what could by himself. Excuse me, that's not gonna leave what's good by himself as he's the final player alive here. Shots are ringing out and the nades as well. Trying to drop the content cannons to use as, to not only use as cover, but to deny access, but eventually nades are gonna fall and so will what's good. Oh, bullied, absolutely bullied against the rock. Not a cool way to go out. Going out, guns are blazing, but not able to, to pick up those frags. A caustic in that situation, a bit of a, a death sentence, really. Our free agent's gonna be put to the death sentence here, though. See, this is uncalled for. Team Fane, I don't know what's going on here. You just finished one squad, and without any <laughs> timing loss whatsoever, you're gonna go after another one. You're, you're just being selfish right now. You're just, you're just stealing all of the kills for yourself, and I don't like it, Team Fate. Actually, you know what? I don't love it. But they do end up going down one player. NV Messiah gonna put his body on the line to do as much damage as possible. Eventually goes down, but the amount of lanes that he was able to open up for the rest of Team Fate to collapse in and steal away that squad was at, was definitely valuable coming out of them. And now we're down to three squads remaining and Team Fate having that ultimate position, that God spot right now that everybody should be fighting for. This will be huge, not just a game win or good damage. Great damage inflicted that by Team Fate. I have all the faith in you. What? Even gets the distance shot too. This is superior. I think they got the down as well, didn't it, Tony, from what I see? Yeah, Watson ends up going down quickly, and that's another thing going in favor of Team Fate. The R301 absolutely ripping, especially in the hands of Fame. And now we're seeing these kind of try to finish off that player. That So the enemy team not going to be able to utilize the knock shield or be able to get a cheeky res. Immediate damage coming in. Messiah forced to back down and play a battery. And so will Faith as well. Faith going all the way down to one shot. Luckily able to brace oh. it behind cover, but she's still going to be hunted down. Faith ends up hitting the rocks here. And that's going to leave Messiah and Deegs by themselves. That's not a part of the plan. That casualty is a big casualty too. Mobility, they've lost a leg. They've still got one leg to walk on though. Maybe some arms to grab as well. Battery come in, keep safe. Try to do something to keep safe in this tournament. But this faith is looking to be dwindling away. It's all down to one player. Lobby B starting to go down to two squads here. Team Faith down to just Messiah. Messiah going up to the sky to try to heal, but Team Ow. M has been ratting it out, waiting for the right opportunity to drop down and oh. put NTDM. Gonna steal away game number two. Team Faith were able to put plenty of kills on the board, but TDM waiting for the right moment to strike. Excellent job by Tony, Durango, and Matei. Bit of a similar scenario from what we saw from Lobby A in match number one there, where you saw girls look like they had that lobby in the palm of their hand. All of a sudden, whoa, and it just slips out like a banana peel and uh, reveal another team. It was NDA. For Lobby B, though, we saw a scenario that reflected that, where it wasn't girls and NDA. Instead, it's going to be free agents, and sorry, Team Faith, I should say, and TDM in that last battle. And Team Faith, so close yet so far, going to have to keep on clawing if they were a victory for map number three yeah excellently played and hold on we, we, we got a question for the lobby here hold on so which legends come from the same planet so that's going to be a rampart crypto watson and caustic or lifeline bangalore octane and loba octane lifeline horizon and loba or loba revenant crypto and Pathfinder. So we're going to be testing how much you guys know about your lore. We know you can shoot your guns. We know you're out here hitting all your shots we know. with your wingmans and your R301s. But the question is, have you been paying attention to the lore? Big questions. And uh, hopefully you have the answers. If you do, there's Apex Coins. Some other swag available in the chat. Do not take your eyes away from that. We'll be right back with plenty more action for the Jack Link's World Rumble featuring Apex Legends. We'll catch you shortly.
Jack Links presents Messing with Sasquatch. Watch this. <laughs> Don't mess with other snacks. Choose Jack Links jerky made with 100% beef. Jack Links presents Messing with Sasquatch. Watch this. <laughs> Don't mess with other snacks. Choose Jack Links jerky made with 100% beef.
Welcome back to it is going to be the Jack Link's World Side Rumble featuring Apex Legends, the here at TGS. I see hundreds of those in the chat as well. Hopefully, looking to get yourself some Apex coins if you answer that trivia correctly. Yes, indeed, it's all going on here. Tony, joining me there. How are you doing, fella? How, how's the games been so far? I'm feeling so good. The games have been amazing, and we found out. By the way, the answer was D. Come on, guys. You guys got to wake up. Get, get, get on. on top of the lore. But I, I'm, I'm doing great, Cuppa, but I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I'm not in a good mood right now. Oh. Uh, I, 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 I'm a little upset. I asked my roommate. I said, hey, look, I'm a little hungry. I said, would you mind bringing me some snacks? Man, brings me some fruit snacks. You expect me to level up my snacking game with fruit snacks? How am I going to get to where I need to be as a caster, as an individual, if you're That's handing me fruit snacks? Get, get me some beef jerky or get out. Are you on my side or not, TDM? <laughs> Still in that number one spot. Clearly, they've had their Jack Link's beef jerky today. Clearly, 40 brother. 40 total points coming out of them between, you know, between lobby one and lobby two. Or should I should say game one and game two. What a performance for them to, to get themselves to that top spot. And sure, individual frags per game are one thing, but the mental fortitude to overcome and to keep going on. Huge things. And Jack Link's most certainly has to be some identity in that fuel to get a TDM to where they are. Jacklinks.ca if you're interested in picking up uh, some of those snacks today as well. Make sure you do because they uh, leave you with that pepper taste, that jalapeno taste, or maybe the original if that is is your jam but from savory to sweet a sweet end for game number two there for tdm i'm interested to see how things went in lobby a as well because we had that nda girl sort of duel in that first lobby and uh, i hope that's continued into to map number two as well we've seen some slow games so far let's, let's be honest with what we've seen fast finish but a slow build up do you want to see a hot drop with some just banger gunfights to start things out for these next games or what do you want to see from kind of that observer perspective there tony i will say that lobby b was a little bit slower than what we expected to see compared to lobby a lobby a game number mm. one was crazy we we're down we we're down to six squads b before round two hill close which in competitive <laughs> apex is a lot different lobby b was a little bit more what you expect to see from a competitive Steady. lobby. I, I will say I, I I get my speed, I get my offense, I, I I get my aggression when I play right. I play right almost every single night, and it's really fun. But I want to see the chess game. I want to see us go okay. down to where there's just not enough real estate for as many teams that are on the map. So every single one of your moves matters. One mistake could get you, a, you know, a top two placing or getting you out of the lobby in tenth place. That's what I live for. I will say, I, you know, you guys probably see me cast some Halo. I've cast some plenty of esports in my day, but there is nothing that compares to a final this. circle of Apex. And the final circle of Apex is it, there, there's nothing like it in esports. So I want to see more of that chess game. Yes chaos bring bring on the chess and i say chaos but high octane um high level high iq chaos where there's so many moves that you see players sweating to make that one move that could be a mistake or it could be fatal to the enemy and you're right those last circles and apex you look up for battle rails it's all fun and games and you have always sort of that way to get out of things but when you get to that final circle in apex you've got to fight the fight and that's exactly what we saw happen to go that's exactly what we saw when nda went all the way and took out team faith in lobby b in game number two it, it's been chaos and i love it and apex we want more of that to come for map number three truthfully we haven't seen the fuse i've got the fuse tash out today i went so far to make a fuse tash yeah not quite as good as his i'm not quite as boomer as he is but we haven't seen a fuse so far so hopefully we see a fuse just for me though just for me I think Fuse pairs really well with uh, with the character like Horizon. We talked about it later before, you know, when Horizon drops her ultimate, it sucks in the enemy players into one centralized location that right. everybody throws nades and does that early damage. Sometimes you can get knocks or even squad wipes just from that. So Fuse works really well with Horizon. The problem is, is that you're losing a lot of value that we're Gibby, Valkyrie, you know, Bangalore. Raids, if, you know, there's a lot of value characters that you need in every composition. So I don't mind adding Horizon to a composition if you're an ultra aggressive team. The problem is, I still think you need a Valkyrie. I still think you need a Gibby. Uh, I still think you need these other value based characters that there's just no option for Fuse. Fuse makes a really no. makes for a really good 
third character, I guess. But even then, there's better third characters. There's better like options. Horizon, like Loba. So, uh, sorry, I don't think you're going to see a Fusey, but we will use it. what we will see is going back into lobby a where we have yeah, lucy baby. and simply meg formerly of e uh emgg eastern media gaming uh i know I, I believe lucy was actually affiliated with g fuel as well i've watched the stream a few times i can tell you've got uh you got all the notes you got all the footnotes all the knowledge to these gamers have the knowledge dropping into mat number three of the jack links world side rumble lobby a we go back to where things started and where we'll return Girl, one of the teams, NDA, no Devos allowed. I know you're uh, on, on that bus as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. It, hey, the Devo is cool uh, and all, but if you play arena like me and you have somebody with a maxed out Devo, you're going to hate it real soon. It, it just <laughs> absolutely shreds with the turbocharger. It is not fun to deal with. I, if all you Devo lovers out there, I apologize. I'm not a fan of you. <laughs> Yo, you got to be honest, man. You got to be honest. Let's be honest. Things are looking all right here for nerds so far. Kitted out with uh, a golden RE45. That's wrong with that. The early game especially. That shreds. Absolutely shreds. Watch it out, though. Picks up the wingman and the peacekeeper. Goes for an aim. The aim game. Bring it in for these early rounds. Yeah, I'm not mad at RE45 uh, going up the early rounds, but I love being R99. That's exactly what you see in the hands of our blood. How to play a flying into the face. Beautifully played. Coming in out of blood. That's been the defender of ground. And it looks like Nerd's able to take down all of the enemy team and going quickly in for the res. Hopefully they can pull off the armor swaps and heal up as Ooh. fast as possible because that was crazy. Nerd's got pushed, but they stood their ground. They most certainly did. They stood their ground as as tough as they could. They called them a giant. It was, uh, it was absolutely huge, humongous what they did. Can we continue to see that kind of performance from the nerds? That was superior. That was really, really good. Mastiff as well. It's, it's hard to hit those flicks as a Mastiff, or with the Mastiff, I should say, in those close combat engagements. So, good stuff so far. Shotgun gang, Peacekeeper and all. They know their vibe. Yeah, I would say get get used to a lot of Mastiff players coming in. When the EVA meta came out and they nerfed the EVA to damn near to hell, to be honest with you, the Mastiff just became that much stronger, especially when you're in those bubble fights. When a Gibby drops their bubble and you're fighting within it, poking in, poking out, you have to be able to master those fights. Even if you're not a Gibby player yourself, you should still learn how to Gibby fight, especially in competitive play, because you get into those fights so often. So with that Mastiff, you can pop a shot. As the animation's coming in, you can duck down for cover so you're ready and then get ready to fire another one and then play it that way if you're able to master uh, the master you can you can be a, a real nuisance when it comes to those bubble fights against an enemy gibby player or if you're a gibby player yourself gibby meta, a hard legend to use as well like you have to be so so disciplined bloodhound on the other hand you can be a little less disciplined. Work outside the lines and get a little bit hyper aggressive. Another scan coming in from Bloodhound 2. From I'm Sir Bear and Sir Bear trying to take a chomp out of the opponent, but they're aware. Sir Bear going all the way down to one shot. Where's the back down? It's is battling within the wall. Finally able to get under it and play the heal. Meanwhile, leave no witnesses. Looking to leave no enemies as well. Looks like they're going to be getting into a fight. We are sad and alone going up against Believe No Witnesses here in the cage. Will be no witnesses. Will be no enemies left at the end of this game. Looking to take out the whole lobby. Sad and alone. Hopefully. Not feeling so alone here. They've got some teammates. They've got a trio at least. Three versus the world. They're going for scan after scan after scan. Just trying to gain some info. They know they're close, but whereabouts are they? How does Jack Link's on stream? And I'm, I'm hungry. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry <laughs> now too, Tony. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, they're, get, they're getting they're getting eaten up right now. Sad and alone, already dropping a player. Luckily, God able to get out of that situation, but they're leaving Sir Bear by themselves, and I'm not sure if they'll be able to wrap around for the banner. What I, maybe what Sad and Alone can do could take a long rotation and wrap almost in a circle and end up towards that banner. Maybe the enemy team won't be gatekeeping that banner for long. Meanwhile, Moosey and Simply Mate, along with Sheepy, 
looking to try to find an angle with empty name looking to find himself into a gunfight here r301 Ooh. out that means their gibby player gonna go down we have another gibby bubble coming in to close the distance empty name fighting well and bringing us down to 14 squads beast of the hunt once more used predators on the prowl all throughout this server Every team just still trying to make their mark. And as of where we are, you're in the third map of that potential six to be played. You've got some time in these kind of tournaments to make some mistakes to recover. But this is almost what I want to see the last chance saloon, Tony, where if you haven't had the best start so far, you've got to make it happen now or it's just going to be sweating the rest of the tournament and no choice. Yeah, lo I love I love that. I agree with 100%. Like, you know, this tournament is not over after two games. There's been plenty no, of times where we've seen teams, you know, have, you know, not the best of starts to start things off in one or two games, but they bounce back in a big way. Just like Jan Sports backpack right now, able to come in, stealing one life and catching some easy shots onto that enemy team, onto the Skyward Dive. Still 14 squads remaining, 35 players on the map, but no lies gaming try to bring us down yet another squad bloodhound skin comes in so that's going to slow them down just a little bit he's trying to keep up and keep a pulse on whereabouts all these teams are no lies gaming themselves see how they've done so far in the tournament not doing too bad at all actually got a couple of frags just on the outer limits of that top 10 so looking to pick up some placements pick up some frags everything will be good for them here 3x on r301 right now this this i mean if you can master the 3x on r301 this thing almost essentially becomes an automatic sniper at i was about to way. say it's a You're sniper to put bro damage i'm telling you I, I i haven't been able to master myself i'm more of a bruiser kind of girl myself but okay. i will say i will not deny the 3x on r301 but be careful if you're in the close range engagements Ooh. you're gonna have to master that hip fire because the 3x aiming down the site is not too good at least in the close range meanwhile team girl trying to get close range the team ends up portaling out it looks like team girl are on the hunt turn into a, a bit of a doctor who episode in and out of these time portals we go and go for the reset they will as well there'll be a gunfire here though for the gen sport back back as i mentioned just in the outer limits of that top 10 they need to get some frags if they want to solidify get through to day number two but team girl are hunting them down girl going down to one shot gonna be forced to play the phoenix but that's gonna be all good meanwhile jance were backpack are right over here over towards the swamp and now they're in the storm so not much to go they're gonna have to try to fight out of this position here and get out of the swamps get out of the swamps get out of the zone everything oh stop it. holding in on them here what, what do you see tony that team is right outside the building. They know they have to know they're there. Yes, they're they knocking. Do. They just started to fly. There they are. Chance for backpack. Can oh. I no longer? Team girl is on the ground. We're gonna quickly go down. That's gonna lead them down to two player chance for backpack. Excellent shots coming in out of the car, but chaotic much ends up going down. Girl gonna try to back down. Tries to play them. They're gonna finish off chaotic much. So now team girl playing this out as a duo. Chance for backpack doing a great job of defending their defending their ground against one of the most aggressive teams that we have in our lobby. I want to say one of the most aggressive teams we have in the entire tournament so far. Easy to say. That's that's nuts. I can't believe they survived this far. That's an achievement unlocked, but they've still got a couple more they can go for. They've got to get out the zone. They've got to get to safety. And looks like that's exactly oh, what they're going to do. They Ash Portal right out of the situation and leaving Team Girl in there. Dust. They're going to try to just they're gonna try to get out of this. They do not want to fight that. I, I love that. You know, recognize what battles you want to take and what you don't. Going up against, you know, an all pro team is not what I want to do. You no, want to pick apart some of maybe the lesser skilled teams that are in the lobby. And that's certainly not Team Girl. I'm not mad at this play whatsoever. No. Oh, this is great game sense, Tony. Uh, end of period full stop you know that you've bit off more than you can chew you know the kind of team you're against full off full off full off we'll re-engage later if we need to that's great communication great game sense also if you're a player down don't take an unnecessary risk get that mental reset get that physical reset maybe even get the respawn but it's not even looking like that's going to be on the cards they, they left a the player behind 
yeah, no chance they're going to be able to recover that banner. So the rest of the game will be fought out as a duo, but you can still get some decent placement points as a duo. And maybe if you wait for, for sure. a third party situation where a team where you already start to see some knocks, you can be able to steal away some kills from that uh, from the enemy team. So I, I wouldn't count them out just yet. They can still do some damage and still salvage out this game number three here for Lobby A. But that banner officially going to be timed out. Team Girl, oh, actually, deal? I thought Team Girl were out of the. Uh, were, 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 were only had to deal with Jetsport backpack, but I was wrong. They actually have to deal with a whole other squad. So now two down this Team Girl, leaving Chaotic What's by this? themselves fighting within the storm. This is absolutely brutal to still be in the zone at this point. That zone tick rate is slightly decreased. Oh, the defenders are still coming through though. I think that was, might have been a wow. clean. That might have been cleaned off from Girl. And sadly, Chaotic tries to go in and res Diff before going down to the storm, but it's not going to be able to do so. So excellent job for Chaotic, but to be able to win his pivotal gunfight, but it wasn't fast enough to get that res off. So girls going to come up. The banner will be retrieved. We'll end up seeing another revive coming in, especially that's a mobile respawn beacon coming in. So that's going to come GK. in clutch here, and so Team Girl will be right back in the action. But like you said, round two hill closing in, and round three is when it really starts to uh, start to hurt, you want to make sure that you're in that storm and avoiding round three hill as much as possible. Yeah, so go put into extra hard mode for, for the time being. There has to be some players that know the way. It can't just be off of the, the teams that they fought so far. There was so much gunfire. There was so many explosions. So much frantic action going on in the storm. A lot of teams are going to be aware of that. And going back to your point earlier, there is enough teams to, to be conscious. Ten teams. Someone must have seen that or heard it. Love this position coming out of Oyo. I want to say it is. I apologize if I'm pronouncing the name wrong. Uh, I'm going to go with Oyo. Oyo, but I love this positioning here. They're, on, they're in the cage, but not only do they have that elevation from the cage, and now they have all that cover, but on top of that, they're towards the edge of that circle. They're towards the edge of the storm being played right now. So, really like it for the time being. Now, eventually, that storm going to centralize in uh, or a little bit away from Capacitor, and you're seeing those buildings being that ultimate playground. So, these defensive teams want to get there as fast as possible i would say anybody with the caustic at this point with 10 squads remaining want to try to get early access towards that building and hope they're going to be able to defend it and hope for the team can defend against the onslaught of team girl fly at them here i'm giving metaphoric cookies to any team that survives a gunfight with girl like the, the gold star on stream if you will and you know what we're not giving cookies away today it's all about the savory instead of the sweet it's jetlinks.ca that of the world rumble Presented by Jack Links. Get a Jack Links in you because you need it if you're fighting girls. Pun count up to four now. We're doing, we're doing, we're, <laughs> you know what? I, I Honestly, I mean, honestly, we're in game number three and only four puns right now. I, I'm a little upset by that. I, 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 I would, I would, that's those are rookie numbers. I want, I want to be up to about maybe about eight. <laughs> Step it up. Step it up with those beefy puns, if you will. Oh. And production, you're on point, man. Uh, I'm going to be taking notes now. <laughs> Chaotic. There's another one. There, go, there we go. <laughs> we got up to five so far. As, cha as Chaotic Much and Girl going to land right on an enemy team. Right they are stalking this enemy, not allowing them to create any space whatsoever. But it looks like on, on landing, they decide to skyward what? dive out of the situation. But what just happened to Diff? Diff just got ripped out. I, I, I have no idea what just happened to Diff. Uh, the, the environment, I guess. Not too sure. <laughs> is it a bird? Is it a plane? Well, no, it's Diff and the ground being the Diff. Diff uh, reduced to being a human just for the time being, not a legend right now. It's a matter, though, because Chaotic got the vision, got the moves, and trying to pull a couple of moves here to screen, gain some intel. I think they saw... So I'm just over the horizon to the south there, and that's exactly where it looks like Girl gonna be headed. Team Girl, like you said, like you see their positioning here on the top left hand corner of the mini map. You see them very close to that edge of the circle, not the red one. You don't want to be the edge of that, but the edge towards that inner circle. That's where a lot of aggressive teams want to play. They want to gatekeep teams that are late rotating. They want to play with their backs against the storm, so this way they know they only have to worry about what's in front of them. And that's exactly what Team Girl are doing. They're a very good edge team as empty name finding one. 
There's other players around here, but that Octane already having red shield, so feeling very comfortable is empty name. But they might end up running into Team Girl. Remember, Team Girl were, were very close to this positioning early on. Close indeed. Empty name. We've seen them put up their best game in a couple of these gunfights so far today. If you were with the clock back to a couple of games ago from Lobby 8. And looking at the, the economy, look at the, the armor. They're looking at such a good spot now. Girl, though, even better spot. And they're pushing, they're pressing, they're bullying. And sending someone maybe into depression, but take it back. It's a slip up from Girl. And Team Girl going all the way down. So one player are costing, gonna try to back down, but the Blood Hands, the Bloodhounds King gonna actually reveal the positioning. Trying to play the knock shot. Oh, no way. Masterfully, massive shots going in. Top shot, ducked down behind cover, come right Hawk back star. in. Beautifully played by Girl, but it was not enough to keep them alive. I know they're gonna be salty after that one. That's another Jacklings pun for you. Throw one on the counter. Throw it up there. Get that tick rate going up, up and away. That's what Girl will try to continue to do for the next fight of the day, but a bit too much. A bit too chewy of a jerky, perhaps, because that one gonna leave them chewing their way into the spectator feed. It would be <laughs> too much greed, if you will, but it uh, doesn't matter. Plenty of jet links for everyone in the server. And maybe another shot for another team to get their name on the stage here. And Space Liquid. Talking of Space Liquid, we slept on them at the beginning of this tournament. What can they bring to this late game or later game here? And we talked about this lobby being so aggressive in game number one. We talked about this going down to just six squads remaining after just round two. But now we're on to round four. Now we're almost in that round five. And there's still eight squads on the map. So it considerably has slowed down compared to game number one. But it looks like Space Liquid not slowing down whatsoever. They have their prey Position. in their sights. The Storm again, being, using the environment and timing against them, making that team grind forward and play out of the Storm while you gatekeep them out. This is just Apex 101 being played right there. And because of that, we are down to seven squads. Battle Royale 101. You take that premise to any Battle Royale and the game will be done. You'll have them under wraps. All those rats. No rats coming in on my watch. The storm, the gun pressed against their cheek, and they're just stuck in the middle. Empty name. Very awkward position coming in out of empty name. You know, they're kind of sandwiched in between two different teams. You have Space Liquid right over to their right, and then you have that duo of Moosey and God after losing Simply Meg earlier. That they're literally sandwiching it on the left hand side. So these are not looking that good for them. Luckily, it looks like the duo of Moosey and God are actually deciding not to engage. They're going to rat it out and conceal their positioning as long as possible. Meanwhile, Space Liquid, they want empty name out of here so they can advance forward and play this loop and ultimately get further into the circle poking the prod in pressing the pry in doing everything they can just to make someone's footing fall but look at these teams that they're, they're just all holding their ground on the cliff face right now Empty name are fighting back, and it looks like Fun gonna be the first one to fall. That's gonna be a 3v2 situation here, but the Craver in the hands of our Valkyrie player here. Like this could be the equalizer. So the question is, will Space Liquid and, and elect to actually engage and like to continue this fight, or they can simply wrap around. They can actually pull over to the, the west side oh, the, and go the all crack. the way around this, but the headshot hitting for 271, not able to hit the second one, but we are see our Valkyrie player from Space Liquid scare away the enemy team and maybe they can pull off the res but Empty Name once again gonna fight back. Surprised we didn't see the missile swarm come in there from X. I uh, that would have really useful. So many breaks there as well but opts in for the safety. Safety first. Get me out of there with my life and uh, we'll reconverge when we can. Oh, the Kraber man. Love seeing the Kraber shot. I see some more. If you don't want beef, get out of the jerky as they decide to get <laughs> out of town here. But it looks like they end up backing out right into yet another engagement. Space is. Liquid fighting for the centralized position. We do have our kill leader still on Valkyrie player. I want to say Zenio, if I apologize for pronouncing that wrong. Okay, gatekeeper once again, 
he knows that it's a player over towards that build that wants to try to exit out the problem is that there is way more than just one player there might be three four maybe even a, a, maybe even a full team here and it looks like Valkyrie takes some heavy damage without the wingman goes in beautiful shot scaring the opposing Valkyrie player away but looks like our caustic player will end up going down that's gonna bring us down to two squads both of them fully loaded fully loaded fully kitted and then there were two three versus three here are these teams are starting to get real close to this victory and the frags coming in. This one is going to be one for one and oh yo taking a pull. Not going to be looking good for Oyo, but it's like NZ Air down a player as well. But Fragment going all the way down. So one shot, the final player alive hunts it down as NDA pull off yet another victory. Make it rain. Being it's raining jerky on the screen. <laughs> it's raining jerky, baby. It's raining dubs as well for NDA. That is two games they've taken out of the three. They've got to be happy with that. You've taken a team like Girls Out in one or two maps, even just one. That is such a, a good achievement to have on your belt. NDA absolutely bullying this lobby, playing like absolute jerks, and I'm not bam, talking bam. the kind with beef. Abs are pulling off yet another win coming into game number three, and we're at the nitty gritty. We're at the point yeah. where every one of these games are going to really start to matter. I mean, teams on the right side of that leaderboard are going to try to fight their way towards the left, maybe changing up their play style. Meanwhile, there's going to be some teams might be trying to slow down and make it towards these end games because they're really close to that money, the, that those money matches. This is the, this game four is where the tides turn and uh, now it we is. have a question on board here for you guys how did octane lose his legs big question, question uh, is option a trying to break a gauntlet record okay okay uh, uh, you know octane gauntlet uh Fair. saving lifelines life I, i've never seen an octane player try to save my life but okay <laughs> experimenting on his own body okay all right and then piloting a titan because we know there's some there's some crossover between titanfall some titan and lore. apex so make sure you guys put your answers in the chat so you get yourself some cool prizes so uh it's all about the jerky it's all about the lore as well so if you know your apex lore and you're just here to see some frags and maybe a little bit more this could be your chance to get those apex coins take a tactical timeout grab some jerky maybe a drink and we'll catch you for another game Game number four, very shortly here for the World Rumble featuring Apex Legends coming from Jack Lins. Catch you shortly.
Jack Lynx presents Messing with Sasquatch. Watch this. <laughs> Don't mess with other snacks. Choose Jack Lynx jerky made with 100% beef. Jack Links presents Messing with Sasquatch. Watch this. <laughs> Don't mess with other snacks. Choose Jack Links jerky made with 100% beef.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back once again with your Jack Link's Wild Side Rumble. And let me tell you, it's been just that. A damn rumble, a damn fight. Yeehaw! But before we show you that leaderboard, we need to find out how did Octane lose his legs and it was trying to break a gauntlet record. Octane yes, lost his legs when he attempted to beat a gauntlet record by launching himself across the finish line with a grenade, bringing a whole new meaning to... I'll catch a grenade for you. Oh, yeah. He'll take that grenade for the team. It's such a, a, a crazy, absolutely lunatic-style legend, Octane. But that is the story. I think I remember that from the, the original as well, when the, the initial launch rate came out for Octane. It's like, this is how we did it. Crazy, crazy man. But the crazy teams in the server right now. Space Liquid. Really, really impressive stuff coming in from map number three. You did see how frank hungry they were. That, that does not surprise me at all, Tony. Not at all. And on top of that, it just tells you how important the placement points are. I say it all the time. You got to combine those placement points with those kill points. Space Liquid and Team Girl have the same amount of kill points. But look at the difference. It's the placement points. That extra 12 yeah. points that you see coming in, or sorry, extra 11 points, I can't do math, coming in okay. is coming straight out of that placement, sitting with 24 after three games. But Team Girl, along with NDA, OU, and the rest of the lobby have plenty of time to be able to make it into that top 10. Again, mind you guys, the top 10 move on to tomorrow's event from Lobby A and Lobby B. If you're sitting on that right side of the leaderboard, you got to change something up. If you if you have zero points or, or, or double or single digit points after just three after three games, that's not going to so, cut the mustard. Something no. has to change if you want to make it to tomorrow's event. So, yeah, for those first couple of games, you get a, a chance of forgiveness. You mentioned that in the games just gone where you're mental. You're like, okay, all good. We've got another game. It's like a best of three scenario, perhaps, from some other esports, if that's what you're used to. But right here, right now, there are going to be six games. We are three deep into those six the fourth one this is the last chance saloon this is where maybe you've had a, a bad day you're not looking too good you're black and white now is the time to make it color paint that picture paint those plays onto the map and make it happen we've seen some crazy valkyrie plays so far um i think that's one of say probably the, the biggest highlight and we've said about how much like a a crutch legend that can be in the world of apex it has been the complete valkyrie show so far quite a bit of watson as well actually yeah, you know, Crutch, Anchor, or just like your staple character is going to be Valkyrie. Like, I, I talked about it before. Like, if I'm making a team composition, I'm giving my Valkyrie to my strongest controller player, to my top fragger, because I know for a fact that if you have that ultimate mobility, there's so many things that a frag can do to open up lanes for the rest of your team. So if you're, if you're a top player out there and you're not experimenting with Valkyrie, I would highly recommend changing things up. Let your IGL run Wraith. Let your support player run gibby and you come out there and f and see how, how, how crazy plays you can make when you're running valkyrie dropping in lobby excuse me, excuse me game number four dropping in once again on king's canyon hey baby take a walk on the wild side the wild side rubble here presented to you by jack links that's another pun just uh, my I add. Four out of six. We've got a couple more games to go. And uh, these teams have to put their best foot forward right now. We did see, thank you very much, production, on points. Definitely. Who is going to be reigning in the Jack Lynx beef jerky in this game? One team could walk away with it. Who's it going to be, Tony? Who's, uh, who's your jerky on? 
I don't know, man. I, I mean, I see, I seen a lot of coming out of uh, a team Faith with Envy, Messiah, Faith, yeah. and Deegs. I, I, I think this squad is poised to to come out on top, at least a lobby B. Now, when we start mixing in some of these lobbies, and you start to see, you know, them going up against Team Girl, you start to see them going up against uh, some of the other heavy hitters in the lobby. We'll see what happens. But as far as making it out to days to Sunday and being at the top of the leaderboard, you gotta look at Team Faith. This is a strong and gotta. experienced roster. Look, take a gaze, an elongated look perhaps, because yeah, they are a killer oh, roster. Really? We've seen some nasty stuff so far. Not the scoreboard, is it going to reflect necessarily who is going to stay there for good? The Golden Lotus, big engagement here, gets the break. Is this going to be a make or break moment for them though, early on? Golden Lotus taking the 50-50, going into the bubble right as that expires, losing their weight player, but clutching it out to get a down. But watch out for the Valkyrie Q coming in. Milkman going to Q right back. Playing the heels, resetting the situation. They know how important this fight is. Oh, they definitely do. Oh, that one player, they're all down to the Valkyrie. Valkyrie, Valkyrie action. This is such an iconic spell battle. Who's going to take this one away? Milkman trying to stay alive here, using not only the cover from this barricade, but also the drop shield being provided by Gibby, controlling when our Gibby player launches that shield and not now quickly gonna back down, resetting, playing the shield. This is a one v one that has to be won. This is game four. No more mistakes. Gonna try to finish off those down players there. Maybe set up for a shield swap, but as of right now, Milkman hasn't hasn't won just yet. Isn't out of the water just yet. Havoc versus the Hemlock. If you had to make a choice, I I'm probably going to say that the Havoc or on me. The what were you, Hemlock or Havoc? What would you choose? They're looking to dash away though. So this uh, gunfight, it was a, uh, it was it was a myth. It's not going to happen. Yeah, both teams decided to, to retreat here, uh, or at least one almost completely, and I'm really surprised by that me action. Too, actually. Golden Lotus uh, might be able to come back and, and, and get uh, get the banner back or get the res off. So both teams, almost a gentleman's agreement between them, decide, okay, you know what, let, let's pause for a bit, loot up, and Time we're going to come back, and we're going gonna to fight this out <laughs> as, as true Valkyrie maids. As far as Havoc versus Hemlock, I, I love the Hemlock from mid-range. I think the Hemlock is absolutely deadly. I, as a controller player, I like to have it more for hey, close yeah, range, but I know mouse and keyboard, today. they can they can jiggle that that they can jiggle that aim a little bit and control the recoil that way in Apex. Yes, it's really can. interesting where you can jiggle your aim and get much less recoil. Uh, but as a control as a controller player, I would say hemlock for mid range, and I would say havoc for close range. I'm gonna put that barrel into the chest of my opponent and put them down. Damn straight. I've actually got a new love for the, the Hemlock. I was a big energy ammo fan for the entire duration of Apex Legends being a thing. But the Hemlock, that ability, you're right, for some long distance to be a bit more dynamic with your gunfights. From dynamic, from a Hemlock, let's go back to a classic, the R301. Such a, a dynamic rifle. It feels so good to shoot as well. Yeah, with the Volt Beam Care Package, I've been really uh, taking advantage of the R301. It's absolutely deadly. Uh, meanwhile, one frag bot taking advantage of a very aggressive composition. We're talking Fuse and Lifeline. And when people think of Lifeline, they don't think of an aggressive character, but let me tell you, like if you're an aggressive team and one of your players goes down and you pop that healing drone, Get up. that forces the enemy team to make a decision. Either they're gonna allow you to get back your numbers or they're gonna have to try to play aggressive to put that player down completely. Lifeline really forces the action. It's why it's so deadly when it comes to arenas. And then you have Fuse who Ooh. can start off engagements with those grenades as well so so, so uh, this is an aggressive composition coming from that team meanwhile hybrid theory getting aggressive as well not allowing that team to valk ult easily i love the leading of the shots there coming from hybrid theory looking as much of a banger as the hybrid theory up of itself go going out with a bang they will in the end who is gonna matter out these two teams Coach Cosmo dropping the dope and then really pushing the defensive oh, the break. to try to deny access as he tries to get away. The problem is he just doesn't have that much movement as a giant target for hybrid theory. Eventually going to take him down, bringing us down to 13 squads on the map. Trying to some other song names from hybrid theory, but it's been a long time since I listened to that Linkin Park album. Long time. That dates me. 
I think I, I just got rid of the t-shirt for that. We'll, we'll leave it at that. For hybrid theory with the composition they've got, though. A very interesting one. You've got your blood talent to get those visuals to, to gain the recon and Wraith. Obviously, Wraith being another staple in the Legend front. But having the Caustic as well there gives the aggression if you want to go hyper-aggressive. Or if you want to dial it back a bit, play for that late game, you can do as well with the Caustic Toxins too. So, I, uh, I'm actually a big fan of, of this Legend composition. Yeah, I, th I think it's really interesting. I mean, not having a Valkyrie is really tough. But, uh, you know, Bloodhound and Wraith, again, but you right. want to get aggressive. I'm not mad at it whatsoever. And uh, in the end... Does it really matter what your composition is uh, when you're going up against hybrid theory? In the end, uh -huh. got you. I definitely got you. The penny drops. And, uh, the coffee's gonna hit. The bullets are gonna hit as well as we go forward with our hybrid theory pun, but no puns here. Distracts only. Hybrid theory looking for somewhere they belong, but it might just be in the lobby here as they're getting pushed on by a hyper aggressive team. But high grid theory takes more than a paper cut to put them down. They come out on top, pulling off the res. Hybrid theory surviving yet another one. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new kill leader, and his name is Captain Cuddles. Captain Cuddles, the, the hug of death, perhaps. The kiss of death, the hug of death in the server right now. Got a fun fact is what hybrid theory actually means. This is uh, complete news to me. Younger Cuppa definitely didn't know this one. Um, it actually is the concept of music theory and combining different styles. That is, oh. uh, that is a type of theory. There you go. The more you know. Well, we just combined esports and music at that point. I, I, I definitely use the song somewhere belong in paper cut as well in the last run here. Meanwhile, Faith. Faith trying to make some plays happen. Your NV Messiah going down to one shot. Faith keeping high ground right now, but wow, Faith and Faith were in a very awkward position, but luckily they're able to survive once again. The Red's gonna come in, bringing Deegs right back up, and we saw this earlier coming out of Team Faith. They love this God spot position. They love sitting on top of the map and just waiting for the lobby to dwindle down to a lower amount, to dwindle down to that mid game, and that's when they get aggressive because they're always gonna be able to make the end game. Team Fate are a deadly team to deal with. Uh, you know, if every battle royale I've ever watched played and cast, it is a bit of a problem for me when it, when it comes to these late game plays. Because sure, you go for the god spot, sure, you're playing for those placement points, that's all well and good. But the problem being, what if you aren't switched on? What if you're not warmed up enough in that lobby? Do you think that's a, a fear tone these players should be having? Or have they always got to be switched on? Because for me, I know if you don't get that early game momentum sometimes, it could be hard to pop off when it comes to a team that have just been running down the lobby the entire game through. We'll see where that one goes. For the time being, we're actually switching back over going to uh the belly of the beast of a team that's been completely bombarded on right now and i mean we're gonna have a wild side rumble we gotta have it in the cage or the octagon wherever it is there has to be a close a close quarters of venue and that's exactly what you're seeing garu going all the way down to absolute if you breathe on a rock he's gonna go down most like chew gonna take it life instead Another break that's gonna leave ahp at a disadvantage you're already having one down waiting for the shields to come in they might end up zipping up towards them ahp in a very awkward position having to fight up and through the bubble but eventually that bubble will expire and it just did come up what team's going to take one step closer to the edge? Who's going to break? I've had a couple of breaks already. A couple of the armor breaks. But what morale? What team is going to shatter under the pressure? And it looks like one goes down here. But not before our, our Ash player ends up being turned into a banner. They're able to recover the banner. They're going to go for a quick res just barely outside of the zone here. But 54 seconds, they will have to rotate or rotate quickly, get that loot, and then move on to their next position. Either way, AHP able to make it into the top nine here with 24 players on the map. I wonder if they're able to make it further. They have a long rotation to get into the uh, get into the zone. And on top of that, there's at least two teams, maybe three teams, blocking their path to safe access. Denial. That's a big thing in Battle Royales in the world of Apex. You might not be hunting the frags, but you'll be hunting positions. You'll be observing from a distance and just trying to get 
that god spot. And look like a good position right now here for you too easy. At least to get the jump on, on this engagement. You too easy. One of the teams that we talked about, that, that team that's over in the cage side that's pulling off the res, eventually has to rotate right through you too easy in order to get safe access into the circle. That's going to be really tough. Being gate kept out is strong, especially when you have a Bangalore on the team. So Bangalore can literally drop a blanket of missiles to deny access and to help mm -hmm. gate keep that team out. We have to fight into you too easy, but it looks like you too easy not, a, uh, not aware that team had to rotate through and they're actually going to rotate over towards the market side, which I'm not mad at, but this might be some easy KP that they can take advantage of. If only they can see through walls like we can. <laughs> Where's the wall hacks? Give me, give me the hacks. They said no. Nope, we're all keeping it clean and kosher here. Unless uh, you're looking for some spicy flavor coming out. Those Jack Links, jalapeno, pepper, original. You take your fancy. It's uh, JackLinks.ca. If you're interested in some level up snacks, get fueled up, get gassed up. See the fueled up toxins here of Caustic in the basement. Rag boy is just uh, dirty lurking around in this building, just uh, hoping for an engagement to come their way. Really like this position out of Rag boys. Look at that. Now that team tries to grab a, tries to grab a hole with the edge of the circle, but they are being held out by Radwood. But be aware, now they're getting shot at from the west side, but there's also an east team that's charge rifling them. Absolutely griefing. This was really good positioning and really good gatekeeping defense uh, and, and defense coming out of Rad Boys. But yeah, now we have another team trying to introduce themselves to the situation. Couple of pings coming through, Red Boys. They're aware. They're aware that they're being pinched here. And that's going to force them into that position, Tony. They've got to make a move. Do they dash for it? Do they go deeper into the circle? Are they committing to this zoning? What's the play? I mean, as of right now, they still have this building. They still are running caustic. So I don't see any reason for them to panic and leave this positioning just yet. I'm actually like, I think, I think uh, like we talked about before, caustic can turn literally any building into a defensive fortress that's exactly what you're seeing right here from rad boys so i think they keep their positioning they chill out right now we still have nine squads on the map and clearly this squad is built for the late game they are with that caustic combo you've got blood time for the info you're gibby with the dome to block out death everything right now within this composition spells late game and spells them getting through potentially to that top five we are in the top 10 already though as zone number three dawns upon us here. 40 seconds for any of those dirty lurking ratty teams to make some kind of play. We are seeing to play a little bit of a spray here from Team Faith. These are not damage inflicted too. Well, the team Faith didn't listen to the one team named No Devos Allowed because they're never <laughs> running the Devo. Deegs has it in I hand it. here. And Team Faith just playing just playing winning Apex right now. You notice that they haven't left this uh, this contained no. area whatsoever. But this is what you want to be. I mean, they're at the edge of the circle. What do you what do you want from Team Faith? Why leave this why leave this God spot opportunity that's sitting towards the edge of the circle when you can, when you can just sit here and deny access from anybody trying to work their rounds rotating around the circle uh, ro rotating around that hill i'm not mad at them whatsoever no and i'm gonna go back to the point and completely kibosh what i said i mentioned is this the right play i think it is positional play they're still getting the frags they're dipping in to zonal and to high octane frag plane if you can do both checkmate getting it done hybrid theory are they gonna be able to get it done though look at the stats they need the big plays they need some big placements here knights of nessie also need to step it up here and they're getting more aggressive I, I like this this is exactly what we need to see from them i don't think hamburger realized that that's a clear window that he's trying to shoot through and the windows in this game are, are bulletproof so he's trying to shoot at a player that he clearly sees it in sight but oh, break. it's a window <laughs> not part of the plan is it it's like oh that window it's not working no it's not you gotta get up close you gotta get up into their face and slap them with the the distance grace the metal Oh, that's a good frag. We no like those. There. No windows to block the bullets coming out of Hamburger right there. Hamburger has a really good shot. And as long as he can see his target, he is going to absolutely melt them. Knights of Messi not only staying alive, but in prime position to move forward here. The question is, will they move forward right into the hands of Team Faith? They need to make sure they rotate over towards the market side because Team Faith had this position locked down. 
I was about to say the word locked. Completely locked. They've thrown away the key. Look at them. They're just like a, a sniper from a sniper tower. That sniper is indeed going to be Deeks. Takes a step down from there and keeps it unpredictable. I'm high ground, I'm low ground. I'm high ground and you're fragged. That's literally the kind of blades we've seen from Team Faith. And that's what's uh, put me at the top of the leaderboard right now. I just noticed something absolutely disgusting. Deeks is running double demo. The, the, oh the, the team name is No Devos Allowed on what in, in the lobby, and this man is rocking double diva. I, maybe maybe oh, my eyes oh. deceive me. When we go to a sing, the, the single view, we'll be able to see <laughs> it. But on the bottom right hand corner, I'm pretty look. It, it is. He has double two Devo. Devos. He has two Devos. I'm done. Do you know? Do you know why it's No Devos Allowed? Because we have all the Devos. <laughs> said Team Faith. They're holding all of that double firepower in their pocket, and uh, they're fragging out. Yeah, this man has <laughs> I just love the fact that there's the team they've called no Devos allowed. And these said, I hear you loud and clear. You want more Devos? Like, no, no, no more Devos. I hear you. More Devos. Gotcha. More cowbell. More Devos. More Devos. That's what we want. That's what we need. Frank, <laughs> this is the serve up. Doesn't have to be a mirage to be the trickster and the Devo. A thousand damage with these Devos right now. A thousand plus. And the final the pick onto Bennett there. To, uh, and look Ooh. at that. Beautifully played. High IQ play. As soon as he starts to have multiple eyes trained on him, quickly utilize that jetpack movement to get right back towards his teammates. And now the storm is starting to force that team between a rock and a hard place. He's able to take down one that ends up going down himself. And now we're seeing Faith utilize that building to try to provide cover. His teammate trying to get access. Let He's me in. Let me in. Out. Let me in, says NV Messiah and Cup of a luckily team Faith are going to regain and continue to apply pressure towards all six of the other teams in the lobby. I felt compelled to pass on the team comms there because definitely someone didn't get it. Let me in. The door's closed. I'm getting fragged. I'm getting shot in the back. And it's not even a Devo. Do you have the black market available? A bit of an opportunity for an upgrade for a level up there. You do see that bubble coming in, but that bubble just expired. And that means Garvu's uh -oh. going to go down here, leaving Chu by himself. And now we're seeing all of Team Faith hunting down the final players here. Hybrid Theory. Looks like they're going to try to get some sight lines on the situation here. But now we have four squads remaining. Not the heels. much real estate here. Forced to heal up his hybrid theory, but eventually they will be pushed. Eventually, they will be forced to fight. Bogey right here. Any good composition or album. Good things take time, and that's exactly what hybrid theory are trying to do. Like a good age wine. Just letting it sit just for a bit. That acquired taste of what engagement they're going to go into. Hybrid theory might be a little bit of a sticky spot, though. They've been scanned. They're known to be. One step closer is Hybrid Theory. And crawl, eventually crawling into the hill will they as they try to make it to the final two. Three squads on the map. All three teams are fully loaded here. Looting up real quick before they decide to move out. The Bloodhound is going to reveal the positioning of a team over towards the north side. Our Wraith player sitting up high with the R99, blocking that team from coming in. And again, once again, you're seeing the Storm start to come into play. Can't keep a team out of the Storm, but they end up getting easy access over towards the wall. And that's because the defensive the bombardment. bombardment is coming in. Now that team that was in great position to gatekeep one out is in the middle of two teams. Hybrid Theory needs to pick a team and fight them because they're in a terrible position right now. They're not in a winning one, and that's exactly what they do. Portal comes right. in, and Wraith is trying to create an access point for them to get out. Of that, of that middle position. That's looking as painful as a paper cut. Perhaps multiple paper cuts. They're going to get out, though. Slim pickings to where they can go. And that portal, that's going to be oh, almost a saving grace. But there's a third party. And that's going to be it. Team Faith able to hunt down the final players. I love that portal to come in to get out of that situation. And it worked well to get them to second place. But eventually, Team Faith were in that center of that, that store, of that circle. They were in the best positioning. And ultimately, once they collapse on you, you're dead. There's nothing, there's nothing you can do. Okay. Team Faith are just too good when it comes to these 3v3 fights. They're too coordinated, coming with too much firepower. They're too good looking. They smell immaculate. I, there's nothing they don't have.
Square jewels. They, they've got it all. <laughs> they Sunglasses. And it's raining jerky as well. And guess what? They're not pescatarians. They're not vegetarians. They're chowing down on a meaty feast. And that's the W spelled out for them as well. Team Faith just... Uh, just Plowing the opponents. It's been uh it's been it's been insane. Yeah, I have faith that they're gonna make it into tomorrow's tournament uh, or into tomorrow's qualifier. I definitely have some faith to be honest with you. They might be the number one team as far as points going into it. They're just playing lights out. It's uh, to lights me out, man. it's it's the combination of offense and defense. When they're when they aggress on you, they're putting you down. They're doing it so quickly, they avoid most of the third party situations. When they yeah. pick a defensive positioning. You can't grind towards them. If you're gonna try to if, if you're gonna try to push towards that top containment, if you're gonna try to push towards them, they're gonna force you to rotate around or simply die in the middle of doing so. It is really tough to go against Team Faith right now. And they're uh, they're looking question good. Time. I, I can't wait to see them tomorrow. Uh meanwhile, we do have a question for you guys. Which legend used to be a pilot? Valkyrie, Bangalore, Wraith. Or revenant, and this is uh, this. Hey. This should be an easy one. I, I, I was gonna this, say this, this is the, this is an easy <laughs> one, but you know, but you know what? We 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 want to give you guys some nice prizes. We don't we don't want to keep it for ourselves. Me and Cup have been oh. full off of Jack Links all weekend. We want to share with you some of these rewards. <laughs> we do. We, uh, we don't be greedy and have the feast all to ourselves. So please get in with that answer. And yeah, that's most certainly uh, a definite, very friendly one indeed. Our team Thaif going to keep collapsing opponents like a, a, a chair when you go camping? Well, you'll find out in a very short moment. Please stick around. Plenty more action coming your way for the World Side Rumble featuring Apex Legends from Jet Leaks and TGS. We'll catch you in a sec.
Jack Lynx presents Messing with Sasquatch. Watch this. <laughs> Don't mess with other snacks. Choose Jack Lynx jerky made with 100% beef. Jack Links presents Messing with Sasquatch. Watch this. <laughs> Don't mess with other snacks. Choose Jack Links jerky made with 100% beef.
have a seat and uh, get ready for so much more action. Welcome back to the Jack Luke's World Side Rumble featuring Apex Legends. We're here at TGS. We have 4,500 smackaroos to give away to some deadly demons in the Apex Legends servers. We are four games deep. Fifth game is coming your way. Team Faith, Girl, just to name two big teams, Space Liquid. We have had so much happen so far today and it's only day one. That it is, and we did have a trick question on there. Although oh, yes. Valkyrie's father, I believe, was a Titan pilot, I don't believe she was. She wears her father's helmet, who was a pilot, but it was Wraith who was actually a pilot. Uh, so a little bit, a little bit of confusion there. I, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I thought it was Valkyrie myself, but a little bit of a trick question. I need to work on my lore. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. You know that's okay. It's okay to admit maybe we're lacking in the lore, but these teams are not lacking on the score. We're not all the way through yet. And Team Faith, <laughs> 91 points, man. 91 points. That is literally like almost double, almost double TDM. Who they've put on quite the fest so far too. Yeah, like I said before, like I, I casted an Apex competitive tournament that ended and it was 76 points and that and the team clearly won the tournament. We have 91 points out of Team Faith and we're not even done with the tournament. So we're going to see a triple digit game most likely yeah, yeah. coming out of Team Faith, which is not a norm in competitive Apex, but uh, I'm glad we're here. No, glad we're here, and uh, it gives a good idea of the players at home that are watching. Didn't see some good numbers. Get in there. If you feel like you are decent at Apex, get in there and maybe get an opportunity to compete against some pros. That's the kind of experience here that's being offered by the Wildside Rumble. You could be a part of it next time, and uh, make sure you do check out jacklinks.ca as well to level up your snack game, jalapeno, pepper, original, whatever it may be. They have something to tickle your fancy maybe frags are your fancy because we have seen so much today and i'm uh, hoping for much more as we get into game number five on your doorstep we've seen wraiths we've seen valkyries um we've even seen uh, a little bit of it we mentioned lifeline as well let's talk about lifeline for a second lifeline the current meta not really i, I want to say like one of the first picks at all but you mentioned some stuff about lifeline i really liked she could be so helpful in those fast-paced engagements for a quick reset tony yeah, I, th I think Lifeline is really good. I, I, I mean Lifeline when it comes to arenas. I feel like it really forces teams to to, to up their tempo. You know, when, when, they, when they're trying to play their numbers advantage and you go in for that res, it forces the enemy team to make a decision. Are they going to let you reset or most of the time they're going to try to go out of position. Then that res that you just put out there and you're able to leave the situation now becomes bait. Now you can bait out that res and coming in. So it, see it seems like it's unselfish play, but sometimes it can be a selfish play by baiting your enemy team coming in and getting some easy shots as your enemy is forced to overextend and try to kill off that player so lifeline can be a very good uh a very good uh, hyper aggressive uh legend and i'm really surprised we don't see her a little bit more in competitive uh but either way i mean you know you got you got bloodhounds you got gibbies you got valkyries and caustics and plenty of other legends maybe she just doesn't provide enough value to some of these compositions yeah, it goes back to the Mirage point, doesn't it? Where those early uh, legends that you had in the game, they served a purpose in a certain time. But that time period has passed. There's more complex, there's more dynamic legends that exist that uh, heals is a great option, obviously. Having a res, a great option, obviously. But if you can bombard someone, if you can fly right up into their face like Valkyrie, or just get up and into the other dimensions like Wraith, why would you? Why would you use that lifeline? You can heal yourself, but uh, choices galore. That is uh, what happens in Apex and so, so much more. 15 teams. Just hungry for, for the points here. Two more games of the day left. And one character you don't see as much anymore as Octane, which uh, empty name has decided to utilize Facts. Octane. Octane was was used so much uh, back Let before the, the they ner pretty much kind of nerfed him to hell. But it was uh, Octane was really good. That jump pad was able to get yourself out of a terrible situation. But also when you're ready to collapse on enemy team to fly in there and avoid all of that damage from coming in almost out of nowhere, nowhere was so valuable for so long, especially for hyper aggressive teams. But now 
We're seeing more raids, just like we're seeing here on Nerds. Bloodhound already beast of the hunt activated. Not only is that gonna give him that easy sightline, make him faster, make him stronger, make him better, but also be able to use that Q. I, I think once every maybe two or three seconds, which is crazy if it you're is. a Bloodhound main. That is mental. That is absolutely crazy. If you're able to utilize it on that recycle as well, whoo! Telling your teammates where everything is. Oh, pull the UAV above your head. Easy peasy. Ultimate accelerant makes things nice and easy as well. Get that ultimate on tap. Seeing some uh, Bodak action as well. Don't see that too often. Yeah, we don't uh, we don't see much of the bow, but I will say early ground loot. Let me tell you, the bow is deadly, man. 60 damage right to, right to the chest. As long as you have a decent aim. I, I play on controllers, so aim assist kind of does most of the work for me. But <laughs> I, mean, I will say, that I, I, I'm not mad if I land on a bow and an alternator right off a rip. I'm ready to take some face if, that, if that's the case. Gotta have a lot of respect for, for a bow player. You are right, though. It is a lot more feasible it's a lot easier utilized in the, the early game but you've got to trade that out real quick when you start getting down to those faster <laughs> gunfights uh, you'll be feeling the difference of bow versus a weapon versus bigger weapon for that matter nothing really to speak of so far though a lot of running a lot of looting uh oh here we are oh too soon though what's happening Nerds have been like, Nerds decided to back down and loot up a bit. And, and I think they're trying to decide whether they want to commit to this gunfight or not. Like, at, at some point in time, you got to make a decision. Now you know that the enemy team is still there. You know that they're sitting there for quite some time. If you keep peeking back and forward, you're kind of just wasting time here. Eventually, you have to decide if you're going to rotate out or if you're going to be able to hard fi fight them. And uh, our rate kind of standing still right there. I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, no, he kind of went to stand still for a second. But here we go. Now, now it looks like nerds are going to try to commit to this gunfight. OG's already committing to yet another one here as they start to grind forward two players with blue, one up, with up and away. And that team decided, you know what? This is not the fight we want to take. But OG's oh, able to peel him right out of the sky. Love to see it. Even better to be it. Good vibes. Some adrenaline, maybe a surge to push them over that finish line here for the OG's. Give you a little recap of how the OGs have done so far over here in Lobby A. Fifth game. OGs definitely have to put some work in. I think, I think they're lined up for that top 10. But every little addition is going to help bolster that and knock back any of those opponents just trying to chase that top 10 area. Reminder, top 10 over both Lobby A and Lobby B. We'll go through today too. And notice how Team Draft completely decided to switch up their composition. Before they were they were running, I believe it was a Valkyrie, Gibby, and a Horizon composition. And although they still have the Horizon on their team, we now have Diff running Octane and girls switching to Crypto, which is a interesting. really interesting legend. I'm a big fan of having a Crypto on the team. That EMP is so valuable, and so is having that inside that the drone provides. Drone, You're seeing man. just legal wall hacks coming in <laughs> as Team Girl looking to collapse on their next break. It is. It is literally like legal hacks. Installed. Oh, God, it's the respawn for that matter. Little push here coming in from girl. This is, I want to say unorthodox wow. composition sprays through the smoke and uh, no joke hits the target. Sheesh. I, I, I don't know how... Can, uh, that is... That is absolutely insane. Chaotic was ripping through the smoke as if he knew exactly where the enemy team was. Absolutely insane. This man, this man was already showing off in Sweden on land. He just came back with a new level of confidence as if he already didn't have enough. And now we're seeing Team Girl once again on the hunt. They have yet another team in their path, dodging frags left and right. Bloodhound getting the first couple of shots onto Chaotic, but Chaotic not backing down. In fact, taking the Q and going not down, but actually going up up and away and takes another frag for the day gets it done aerial maneuver with a peacekeeper of all weapons unorthodox untraditional but my gosh is it gonna work great stuff from girls and i'm just gonna go back to the point you mentioned about crypto with the drone i think that was courtesy of the drone that that really confident push that we saw the drone got the info they made the push and uh off they go on to another engagement though jet backpack taking some bullets here 
Yeah, Shibi now going to be the final player alive here on this squad. I'm not sure if they're going to be in Run, a position forest. to be able to go in for the res. Sadly, it looks like our Gibby player going to try to get out of dodge, and it's not going to happen. Just like that, we are down to 11 squads at the moment. Game number five really starting to pick up. Yes, it is. This has a different feel, doesn't it? It has a bit more of a, a reckless feel. These teams know they have got nothing to lose now. Go for broke. Send it. The nade pin sent in as well. One IQ at the moment. I'm not, I'm not insulted. I'm, that's, that's the name of their team. <laughs> not insulted whatsoever. Also running a crypto in their composition and chasing a team away. Get off my lawn, says One IQ. As Valkyrie getting absolutely ripped. Love that bubble coming in. A very unselfish bubble out of Gibby. There's no real cover here on this area. So there was a chance that while Valkyrie was healing, they might have been able to get peeled and get taken down from across the map. But that bubble early access comes in. And now we see Valkyrie back with the full shield. And be careful. Because now they get pushed. Now they hit with, ult with a defensive bombardment. They won't have a bubble anymore to defend against it. No, they will not. Definitely will not. Seeing a little vision of another team, a team we haven't really seen too much of, for either of these teams here, Team 18 or Team IQ, or 1 IQ I should say, hopefully they can stack 3 IQs up and uh, triple down on some plays here. 1IQ is still very much in the mix, having th all three of their members with purple shields. So much value in that extra shield. It can be the, 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 it can be the deciding factor between getting taken down with a couple wingman shots and getting taken down from a few and being able to tank a bit. Team Girl trying to deny access here, taken to the skies and chaotic much. Already ripping down shots with the R301. That's the exact crack they want to see. They want to do that initial damage and force that enemy team to break. back down while they close the distance. I just love the playstyle of Go. All, all three of them are just piranhas in, in the water. One person just dips a toe in and they've all just already had a bite before the person had a, a chance to think about what they did. That's literally what's happening time and time again. The collapse, it's, it's unstoppable. Diff trying to stem his way into this early action. If he can slow down the enemy team uh, like with a couple of low play shots, his teammates can catch one. up for He can just do all of the work himself by taking down one. Octane now going in for the quick heals and then right back to stemming, chasing it down. You cannot escape from a good Octane player. Let me tell you, Diff is definitely more than just good. Self-sustainable with the boost of the stim. Self-sustainable bit of health regen. Also self-sustainable with this car. Let's talk about the car real quickly. You got the option to switch out to the light ammo. You could switch out from your heavy ammo. And that also gives a bit more self-sustainability to Diff. Just making a push. Has all the ammo on tap. Yeah, just easy peasy. Makes it look easy at least. Yeah, all the attacks are gonna go on it, and, and, and also, like, the R99 is such an absolute nuisance of an SMG, but the consistency on it really isn't that much, especially if you can't control the recoil. The car is a lot, it's almost like a more consistent R99. I don't know if it I has like that. the same speed of TTK with the R99, but it can definitely compete as far as consistency and having a lot less recoil. So you see the car really come into place. Players like Diff running this car peacekeeper combo. You can see players like Design for and Gent on G2 running a car and a wingman combo. It is so strong and it's quickly become a fan favorite in it competitive has. gameplay. It, it definitely has for good reason. Ever since that car's been added, it's, it's being used like a car to commute to work. Everyone's jumping in, everyone's on board, all aboard the car train. Here at Bob Barman, who's taking the hits? Team girl. Keeping that height and damage, but quickly oh. dropping down right behind enemy lines. What a flank coming out of our Octane player, aka Diff. Now just pushing forward. Car is already out, taking down one, but it looks like they end up losing girl, but it's still a 2v1 gunfight. That Valkyrie player trying to get away, oh, but that's gonna be it, team girl. Bringing us down to just nine squads at the moment. They're quickly gonna get the res off and right back to the action. Team girls, it should be it should be a plural. It should be another S on there because this is definitely a pack of ladies just stomping this lobby, stomping skulls, kicking them in. It's really they might not have won games today, but the impact of girl on this lobby, on this tournament, 
it's not going to be forgotten anytime quickly. Not at all. They must have got to triple figures by now as well within the counts, within the point counts. I went over it at game six. Yeah, I mean, even like going back to like game one, for example, when they didn't end Please. up coming out with the win, but on the leaderboard, they had a four point advantage over the team NDA, which actually did come out with the win. So that those kill points are valuable. And place of points can only get you up to 12, which can be good, but you have to be able to combine them with kill points. And let me tell you, with the way team girl are playing mm -hmm. and are running through this lobby, it's almost like a speed, a speed run. Like they're trying, they got some place to go. They must got a hot date. <laughs> they must have a hot date. There must be a three course dinner at the end. The sixth kill bolstering girls' rags hit. As though they need more. Just boosting their confidence at this point, I think, Tony. Team growing now right back on the prowl here. They had to go a little bit outside of the zone to be able to get that kill off. But with a whole, a little over a minute, they had plenty of time to not only secure that uh, that kill on the red, but now get back into a more favorable position right back to the edge. Up, up which I, I mean, we talked about it before, how strong it is to play the edge of these zones, especially if you're a hyper-aggressive team like girl trying to isolate some of these 3v3 death fights. Go distract themselves as rats in the shadows, but then just bounce out. And it's an absolute tiger. It's a lion that bites the head off the opponent time and time again. We've seen that. Oh. A snake in the grass. And what do you see? Our I team player already going down here for Team Girl. That's going to leave them by themselves here. But it was like Chaotic trying to equalize the situation, Ooh. trying to get a knock of its own. But it's going to be Girl and Chaotic fighting out the rest of this battle as a duo. And the Seer ult coming in. That is not looking good for Team oh, Girl. That is just too much here. This is going to be a struggle. The struggle bus all aboard. Chaotic hasn't looked in trouble all tournament long. But right now looks really in trouble. Chaotic trying to put down damage uh, and, and beautifully played by them. They're able to get Diff up. How? Well played as, as How? Diff now come out. Uh, they actually went right in for the res. Diff is now on the map here, but coming down with white shields and no and weapons, nothing at all. Meanwhile, the damage Chaotic, Chaotic. going to try to defend them. Going all the way down to one shot, forced the back down, fuse right back up, and somehow Just. they weren't able to take him down. Take some notes. Take a picture. Mom, grab the camera because Chaotic's still at it. Somehow, finally gets taken up mid-air. But what a tear. Six frags before finally getting taken down as you hear that KO, that casualty sound. Only one player left here for... In fact, no players left as they go for the wipe. So it's all into NDA. Can they get the kill points? Can they get the placements too? The, the combo. The yeah, NDA did a fantastic job of killing off Diff immediately and then thirsting him. That put them in a, in a terrible position. It was Girl and Chaotic much by themselves. So what they did was, I think they played excellent. Chaotic much is a very strong slayer. Sits there, puts down that damage, and buys enough time to keep NDA almost by himself, by the way. While Meanwhile, Girl hopped into her drone, stole the banner in the drone, then rezzed Diff to bring him back on the map, all while Chaotic much was fending off a 1v3 scenario in the middle of a seer all that Light. was absolutely insane coming out of it to fight off a 1v3 by enough time now i will say eventually obviously chaotic much and girl did go down but diff comes back and he's still on the map diff is actually was able to rat out and get out of that situation and i believe he is still here on the map and he uh, obviously ran away there, there he is. we go there he we has go the beacons he has a mobile he has a mobile and now just like yes. that team girl gonna be right back into the action this will i mean obviously nda won that engagement but team girl did everything they can to stay alive and i think they played that situation very well i think perfectly considering how toxic that situation was they had to hold that gunfire one versus three you need to say no more really and even surprised me that it got out there alive after yes. just such a ridiculous gong show kind of battle there. And as much as we kind of are singing the praise of Team Girl, we also got to sing the praise of NDA. NDA but by the yeah. way, that, when that ult comes down from Seer, 
the amount of intel you get just allows you to collapse so confidently some of the problems that comes with collapse on apex is you don't have a full grasp of the situation you don't know exactly what enemy is you don't know who's waiting to rat out a third party situation so using that seer ult to start those engagements obviously nda coming out on top of that is really you have to have your yeah. the intel combined with your or with your gun skill was able to keep them alive but it looks like team girl going down yet yeah, once again girl herself being turned into a uh -huh. banner and that's gonna be dip and chaotic by themselves getting stunned by the value queue chaotic and dip gonna have to try to rotate out of this situation with it's the circle small. getting smaller and smaller there's not much there's not much places for them to hide out in this, this is every player for themselves at this point and you're right there's no place to hide you can run but you cannot hide team 18 stepping in to the ring and to take out a big team and to put up some big numbers so far. Look at the damage. Look at the frags. Look at the assists. This is real good from Team 18. Bit of a sleeper so far. They're going as Team 18, but we know that Space Liquid. We, Andy, you, you, you can't hide from me. We, you can hide your name. We, we still see the characters. We still see the, we still see the usernames. This is Space Liquid right now. Another team going for the win. Poised to qualify, making it to Sunday. But at this point, every kill, every placement point is just a statement being made to the rest of the lobbies. The rest of the team say we are coming for that first place. And do not forget about us. Nice liquids have put up heavy digit so far. And with the way they're going right now, it's going to be another bolstered, stacked lobby in the sense of frag takeaway. It only gets better and better as you go through to the deplacement right now as well as we approach top five. NDA having all three players Ooh. with the red shield. Excellent shots coming in from the wingman out of Bert. Bert I'm going to say Bertadum. Taking damage, they'll force them back down in the middle of that seer all knowing exactly where that player is rotating in. Now gonna try to get aggressive, but Intel going right back on him. And Bloodhound ends up scanning and revealing his position immediately. Four squads remaining. NDA very clearly one of them with how well they've been playing each and every engagement. When your Gibby is slide swinging players with a wingman, you know things are good morale wise on the team. And that's exactly what NDA are doing right now. It might be the sort of the, the fortress of the team, but coming through like an airstrike as well. Talking of airstrikes, does have the bombardment available too. So ulties available. Gonna be really nice for, for these last couple of moments here. NDA sitting up top. Wingman in hands here. Meanwhile, Team 18 or AK Space Liquid right under them. So not a favorable position coming out of Team 18. And what they're counting on is they're counting on for another team to start to engage on NDA so they can ultimately get out of the situation here. But there's no guarantee that's going to happen. NDA sitting very comfortably on top. And they're still within the storm. They're still within the circle. So there's no reason for them to rotate out of the situation. To, uh, Space Liquid really somebody to engage onto NDA so they can get out. Meanwhile, you're seeing on the on the uh, map here, you have TS. Uh, I'm sorry. To Sam Cho, apologize. Sitting out over towards that, uh, that south side. And then you have this beautiful spot coming in right behind this uh, this airplane coming out of late night Sosis and bd and eb killer love that positioning coming out of them almost as much as i like nda and they're sitting on high ground but eventually that hill will close on them before it's going to close on their opposition so i almost like that uh, that i almost like their opposition's positioning better right because they're anchored slightly they they can potentially hold their ground but i don't know if you just saw that gibby bro he just whipped out the alt that he is, and it looks like NDA gonna take to the skies here. Very unorthodox coming out of them, but it's only for Intel. They actually did they, they did that. They only did that to use uh, to to use Valkyrie's uh, I guess passive to be able to know exactly where the enemy team is, so they can plan their next move from there. They end up landing right exactly so much where damage. they thought they were, but now the storm is closing in. So right back where they started. Now
Bowser forced to rotate out, dropping down right onto Space Liquid. We talked about no Space way. Liquid not having the high ground, but MD forced to go onto their turns, losing two players. That's going to leave Pubski, our seal player, by himself as two quickly go down. That's the exact moment that you're seeing our opposition start to grind forward. That's Bangalore smoking coming in, trying to do that damage, not able to get the kill that he wanted. So backs out, resets, and it comes right back in. Hector's ratting it out in the back of the plane. And because of that, they were able to stay alive. Pubs, he ends up going down. Well played by Hector. I said it before. I like this positioning better than NDA's because NDA's position was being closed on the hill. They had that ultimate height. But when that storm starts to close in on you, you're forced to make the first move. And Hector's all they had to do was just chill out for a bit and wait for the damage to come in on uh, on its own. Wait for, wait for the environment yeah. to finish off that team. And you talk to position from Hector, so I'm going to give a little analogy. That's like if you've got a bag of Jack Links, right? You're passing it around the room. There's one piece left. One piece of Jack Links in the bag. That's going to be Hector. So ben, don't mind if I do. Take the last piece. Good positioning. Took the right kind of engagements. Didn't get too greedy. And yes, that is going to be another Jack Links pun. Why are we making those? Well, it's JackLinks.ca uh, partnered with us here for the Worldside Rumble uh, featuring Apex Legends 5K up for grabs here, along with some Apex coins and some swag in the chat. Be giving away, giving lots of trivia questions, and uh, hopefully those continue as we go on down. And uh, talking of trivia questions, uh, let's have a look at this one. Bangalore is a soldier for which faction? Bangalore is a soldier for which faction? Is it A, Apex Predators, B, Hammond, C, Frontier, or D, I, M, C? If you know the answer to that, Get it in the chat. Don't be shy. And uh, you could see a prize before your eyes when we come back to you in just a little jiffy. Five games deep. One more game on your doorstep. We'll see you in just a second.
Jack Links presents Messing with Sasquatch. Watch this. <laughs> Don't mess with other snacks. Choose Jack Link's jerky made with 100% beef. Jack Links presents Messing with Sasquatch. Watch this. <laughs> Don't mess with other snacks. Choose Jack Links jerky made with 100% beef. We are back once again with your Jack Link's Wild Side Rumble here. We have four, five games down now and just one game left. And it's kind of bittersweet. I don't I don't want this to end, but I don't, we, eventually we got to come to a conclusion. We have to find out what the answer is going to be, who's the best in the lobby, and what's the answer to Bangalore as a soldier for which faction and that's going to be the imc and if you take if you pay attention to some of the voice lines she has literally said it multiple times in there <laughs> almost every time say coming out of the imc imc and multiple different voice lines and that's exactly who she was fighting out of space liquid trying to fight out of this lobby as your number one team putting an 80 three points 51 of them being kill points no devos allowed nda at 82 <laughs> right behind them in the second place spot and our ultra aggressive team girl sitting in third place with 63 points after five games so well 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 and that really weaves into the narrative what we're talking about that just at the beginning girl will run away with the show absolutely they were gone and they have been consistent throughout the entire tournament however space liquid started to turn up the heat a little later in the tournament so it goes to show that it's different in the play styles of how these teams get revved up maybe they're a slow burner and they pop off at the end maybe they pop off early and then get a little bit more complacent and reserved for those later games apex has an abundance, I think countless playstyle compositions you can have, which really makes it a great watch and is making for a great tournament so far. One last game, this is it, a moment of truth on day number one. Who are gonna be the top 10 teams from both lobbies to get through to that second money day? And can we talk about how how much hell lobby a really is like how close <laughs> you have team girl one of the most aggressive teams that are in the lobby not even finishing in first place Just. meanwhile our first and second place team only separated by one point meanwhile in lobby b one. there was a very clear winner there was like a it was like a 20 point lead it was like 91 points coming out of one squad lobby a has been the probably and probably the most competitive lobby out of the Sincerely. two but i will say we're hopping into lobby b and i want to see one team just wreak havoc like we said they were just running through and uh we're gonna be hot dropping right into a kinks canyon once again and you know when we drop into lobby b we gotta be looking at team faith after four point after four games they had 91 points i don't even want to know what points they're at after five games they've been absolutely lights out you know it's funny if they if they put down their controller right now 
and just win and go good. have dinner or something, <laughs> they would still qualify for tomorrow and probably still be in first place. That puts it in perspective. Say no more. Say less. That is literally defined. The performance just exceeded everyone else in the lobby. Can't touch this. Is something perhaps they may say. Who's going to have a say in lobby B for the final say? The final hoorah in game number six of six. See that circle. That, see where that centralized position where everybody's going to be fighting for soon. Meanwhile, T4E might be getting into a bit of an engagement here. There's a team sitting on download. That's going to be one frag bot. This is one of my landing spots here that one frag bot is landing at. Land here, loot up quick, and then make your way down and either take the 3v3, go into a third party situation, or if nobody's here, usually teams will rotate through tunnel. It's a very popular uh, strategy being made amongst, uh, amongst some of the streamers, uh, some of the top end streamers. I actually even seen Chaotic, and I'm sorry, I even seen NV Messiah do it on himself and one frag bot stealing this strategy as well looking at t4a they're like a, a lightweight and a heavyweight category right now they have got so much to do i don't want to say it might even be on the brink of impossible for, for them to get themselves into that top 10 but as mentioned before six games do give an opportunity for anything to happen absolutely anything at all and maybe just a chance to improve their standing in their ranking here to give them something to work on and work forward with into future tournaments. If, if it's not, they too. There's the cut spot again from Team Bay. That's familiar territory, buddy. Challenge Team Fate into a 50-50, but it looks like you too easy are up for the challenge here, and they've already incorporated a rampart into their composition. A very interesting life shame, but Viva off the screen. It looks like the end of the the most wise to play almost immediately. That's gonna be Auntie and Rampart simply by themselves. Oh. It quickly goes down. Rampart, excellent shots with the car, but it wasn't able to knock down one. Shield goes down, but eventually so do you too easy. And although it wasn't easy, Team Fate bringing us down to just 13 squads remaining. Bold, brave, courageous efforts coming in there to take on a team like Team Fate. You know who you're against and you're like, you know what? Let's just go for bro. Respect. Massive respect to a team that are going to go out in flames, go out on fury. I have to say, did that have something to do with a Rampart choice, maybe? Is Rampart as uh, questionable as Mirage? Uh, I don't know if I would say as questionable. I think Rampart definitely adds value. To be able to any legend that can put down cover in open space is definitely viable. And obviously, the, the shield absolutely shreds. Uh, and, and again, it comes to a situation where I think every legend in Apex provides some kind of value, but which legends offer more? You know, do I want a Bloodhound scan? Because that's going to really help everybody on the team and help us uh, just gain so much intel. And you know, intel is power. Or do I want a Rampart shield? Give me a bloodhound scan every time. <laughs> you know what? I think that's it, really. It, it, it's a bit of a no-brainer of what gives you more bang for your buck. But hey, if gunfire is the, the bang for your buck you're looking, Rampart may just be the choice. And I jest, by the way, Mirage. I know, Mirage, uh, definitely. It's got to be slept on and we'll wake up to the Rampart. So no Ramparts now. The Rampart has been and gone. It's the Bloodhound, the Octane, and the Wraith combo. Traditional selection of legends here. And look in a, a pretty good spot right now for for the gain of util for the gain of econ the weapons they're building up their fortress. Look at this Fury trying to climb up and getting that ultimate god spot does Bloodhound. I didn't even know you can climb up. Not that I. I'm always using my Loba bracelet or having a Valkyrie just fly up there, but very rarely do I see a team actually climb up all the way from from low ground and get all the way to this god spot position the way Ryan did coming out of hybrid theory. This height is going to net him so much value here. He's going to be able to rain down shots and open up lanes for his teammates to get aggressive. Out. Sees that coming in, says I'm out. Get me out. Off of that's the reposition coming through as well. So you see a Gibby bombardment combined with the Valkyrie reset. This could be huge. Oh, but you notice our Bloodhound player, Ryan, was the only player up in that god spot. So free ages were looking to isolate him. They actually pretended to run away with that uh, with that uh, Valkyrie ultimate, but instead they landed right in that spot. Luckily, Ryan had the awareness to be able to back down and get towards his teammates. Otherwise, he would have been aped by three players coming out of free agents.
No one wants to be a part of that. That back down. Are, are they going to be able to offer the smack down? Big questions here. The frag coming through. For free agents. This is going to be a big fight. Hyperdury already going down. Oh, look at the push. Player, and it looks like the havoc coming out of oh. They just wait too much. The Peacekeeper putting the shot into the body. All three players for free agents still alive and up. And looks like they all go down. Does Ryan and Team Hybrid Theory. Not a feint, but they end up being taken down by free agents. Downs are just 11 squads, 32 players on the map, and free agents quickly heal up because there's no, there's no third party situation going to be able to, uh, going to be able to force them out. It was well played and so quick by free agents. It's a moment here. like that that you feel just by yourself, really. You feel a bit alone. Go to sleep on that and be like, man, what could we have done different against a team like Free Agents? I think, unfortunately, not much. Just the firepower, the fury, the aggression from them has been too hot to handle for a lot of teams. And Free Agents looking to stamp a hole in their ticket for day two. That there are plenty of loot to gather here before they have to force their way out. And even if they do get caught in the storm just a bit, it's only round number one. So nobody's really stressing just yet. Coming out of free agents, they finally get all the loot they want. Pigs are going down so they know exactly where they're looking to go here. Can free agents make it to that final 3-2 or maybe even come out with the win with the armor they're looking like and with the loot that they have? I mean, a gold havoc. We have two purples and, and a gold shield coming out of free agents. This, these are looking very good for this squad. Maybe they should stop being free agents and form a team together. I'd say. <laughs> but it, it's about time. If they don't walk in out of this, then uh, time to reconsider what they're doing with the Apex lives. Just, yeah. Looting, looting, looting. Not worried about that zone. Nice and early still. Still round one for that matter. And this game had a, a bit of a, a different tempo, hasn't it? It's been a lot a lot faster for those first engagements. Bit of a lull in the break where everyone's traveling their transport time from this first zone. But uh, already down to 11 squads. That we are T4E. We're just getting some information in the chat that T4E is actually a youth team. They're from First and Nation, and they're a, uh, they're a group of eighth graders. So we 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 got the young boys trying to compete with the, with the with the with the men and women in the lobby and holding Spets. their own. Good for them. Let me, let me tell you, if, if they're out here slaying in eighth grade at this young. I can't wait to see when they reach, you know, when they Killing reach that it. peak, you know, that, that 18, 19 years old when they're going to be slaying left and right. Big, big ups for T4E. Reagan big ups Reagan. indeed. Great info, Tony. Massive info. And you're right, like, to be able to all stick together, work as a team. And that early is a dream. Get the reps in. <laughs> team Faith, they've got their reps in today, that's for certain. This game, though, playing it a little bit different, and, and by chance playing it for a player down. It's a two player up, one down. What can they do to get that sound going on? Oh Looking like a bit of a sketchy gunfight here, Tony. That is Team Faith for one of the first times oh, we're dear. seeing on their back foot here in the lobby going down oh. too quickly. And it looks like the third one is going to fall. And we see Team Faith hitting the lobby a lot earlier than expected. And AHP's Staying alive here in the top 10 and going straight for that cage positioning. I wonder how that's going to shake up the leaderboards going forward. Yeah, you did say at the beginning that Team Faith could put the controllers down. They could put the keyboards down and mouse them out. I don't think it's going to hinder them too much. But one thing it will do is open up the door to some other teams, perhaps, to step onto that podium. Even if it's not get through to day two to get some consolation prize in the form of placement. Red boys did see some nice total plays from them as well in game number five. Not too big on the frag front right now, but positioning might be able to give them that boost into the top ten. Stump Kitty still in the lobby right now. Having a player with white shields, that's going to be Caustic Chili Taco. So he's going to want to try to get some early cheeky damage to try to upgrade that. Even blue shields won't be enough when you get into, the, you know, that round four, round fives, uh, where eventually you're going to want everybody to have purple shields or above. 
uh, either way some kitties they're very comfortable in this choke point you notice here on the map if you look over towards the north side if any teams are rotating over towards that cave they're gonna end up running right into some kitties and that should be some free damage coming in and maybe even a free win in a 3v3 meanwhile golden lotus having just one player alive it's gonna be coach cosmo let me tell you honestly give me ain't the best player at ratting it out he's kind of a giant target on the map target right on the back of your head yeah you are stocky brimmy oh brimmy excuse me stocky gibby if i can get the the right e right a stocky fellow nonetheless just try to slug it out and uh make it happen not the last legend you want alive full transparency anyone but a gibby but gibby gliding soaring hopefully looking to score but getting right down here this is gonna be difficult Another bubble goes down here for Coach Cosmo. Going to use that as cover as he tries to run back into these caves here. Coach Cosmo being hunted down. Doesn't it like to use the defensive bombardment as he's still currently safe. Now, if he ends up getting shot again, we might end up seeing that happen. That seemed like a, a get out of jail free card. The card's been used now. Or has it? Just run it. Run, Forest, run. Run, Gibby, run. Coach Cosmo somehow still alive here, but you see that circle getting smaller and smaller. We are already in round number three. Less than two minutes on the clock for this to move out. And Coach Cosmo said, I need to find a spot to chill out for a while. I'm tired of being chased here. Free agents, though, already collapsing. We see it. Oh, we see the part, but we see a closing bubble. We have our boundary player quickly going to back down and use the closing bubble to try to find some kind of cover. But one player immediately going down. Oh. Excellent. Aren't we a one shot? Coming in out of light, dropping down with the peacekeeper and knocking all of those players out of the lobby, getting the ultimate out of their face from Horizon. That black hole can be such a nuisance as we are down to nine squads and nobody inside free agents live to see yet another gunfight. Yes, they do. Looking at free agents' track records here as well. Is it a quiet game in game number five for them? Historically to how they performed today, which has been, I want to say, lights out. The lights were on. They've started to dim them a little bit. Get that mood lighting going and see what they can pull together for, for game number six. So far, so good. But what's good? What's happening for them? Ando trying to put the flat line to more gear. They're getting into another 3v3. A little 50-50 gunfight as a bubble coming in very early out of what's good. Ando trying to get any kind of angle. Nade's going to start to fly in. But he knows that down in front of him. So that means it's going to be a 3v2 situation. Ando taking some damage coming in from height. He's going to quickly go into the building and try to, try to use that caustic gas for cover. Meanwhile, TDM are playing height onto the roof as a duo nwa tony and durango legend doing everything they can to fight this 2v3 scenario yeah just like a a tarantula just hanging in their web waiting for the prey to drop into it taking their sweet time don't need to rush anything here not really feeling the pressures of anything coming the zone to one side and their opponents beneath them and this is really important because what's good is currently sitting in 13th place at the moment here. Meanwhile, TDM are sitting comfortably in second place. They don't have really much to worry about as far as making it into day two. But we do see, I mean, it's only the top 10 that make it forward. So what's good? They have to be very careful taking each and every one of these battles because they got to make sure they stay alive and at least make it to the end game and have a decent, decent amount of kill points as well. You're seeing right now, Ando not having any kills or assists. That tells me that what's good doesn't have any kill points most likely as a team and they're gonna probably have to try to find at least one or two squad wipes on top of a top three finish to try to secure them making it to sunday and to be honest with you even that might not be enough and that's where things can get sticky that's where things get really sticky and feel like you're stuck in the mud no matter how much of a good performance you put on here is that gonna get you through can you do that quick math in your head quick math don't much pressure as though that wasn't enough pressure being in this server right now oh getting absolutely pelted with bullets here free agents i don't know if they'll be able to survive this 
free agents currently in third place right now. So another comfortable team in the six squads remaining on the map. And it looks like they do get their position revealed by Ash. So eventually they're going to look to collapse on them. And look, now look at the picture picture. They're literally right on the other side of a team here. So not the best position coming out of free agents. And I'm not sure if they're aware of that because we have at least three teams in general for Sydney. It looks like free agents are going to make the smart move and just rotate out and over towards the uh the west side here i like this play come out of free agents you don't want to try to get yourself in the, in the middle of a sandwich you want to try to become if, the, if not the beat that be the bread of the sandwich trying to take a perimeter tdm Beauty. having all three players alive once again able to get Matei back one knock goes in tony gonna drop the smoke and try to get out of the situation but hunted down and put down is tony once again another duo another duo situation come out of tdm master stop starting to hit 55 onto one 66 onto the second one that's a squad wipe as tony gets revived ladies and gentlemen we have ourselves a new kill leader and his name is Matei. Matei, looking really healthy compared to the rest of the team everyone just try to Slap a band-aid on it. Durag, Tony. Just getting themselves back up to... Feeling healthy. Click their heels and uh, off to run down and reveal another team best they can. Always curious at the back of my mind. Like, where are these teams going to be sitting on the scoreboard? We don't have time to check out the leaderboards right now. As we get down to the final five squads. The zone closing in. Round four, just on the brink. Look at the spread, too. Kind of centralized right now, all the teams. Yeah, everybody having at least some kind of cover to work with going into round number five, Storm. But it's not going to be the same if we go down to round six. So this intel that we get right now is going to be really important. And there we are. We are seeing that that circle is starting to pull more towards the southeast side. So teams like Rad Boys do not have the best positioning at the moment. And they could be gate kept out. So this building... Okay for now, but a minute and 13 seconds, they're going to have to fight and they're gonna have to reposition. Let's check out this way. There is a closed door here. We'll get Soaking it all in right now. I think enough said to what's going on. You see the zone, you see the teams, and they see that center of the zone. Everyone just eyeing up the prize, eyeing up this last game. We do see that next to zone that there is going to be at least one building that everybody's going to be fighting for. And you're seeing the ping start to go down. That's exactly where that opposing team is. So everybody's going to be fighting for this building that's within the circle. But there's also a lot of open space that's really not much to work with outside the circle. But oh, Rad oh. Boys, everybody fighting in for that building. They start to fly. Looks like Katy Perry is going to end up going down. Promise the real shots go in. R301 going to hold off one back. But it looks like number one Watson is the second one to go down. Leaving our target player by himself. He's doing a great job of fending off the offense. But eventually, it is not enough. He is taken down and so is his entire squad. Just like that. 11 players on the map. And there is one team taking to the sky. Katy Perry falls and so does the plastic bag in the air. Just drifting by. near me. <laughs> Distant grab there. Real distant grab. Distant grab? Is it going to be a couple more frags here for the likes of TDM? They've been fragging out all tournament long. I want to say they've gone from a simmer to a boil in this game, though. And almost sort of replaced that presence of a team like Team Faith. And we do see an Ash Portal going in onto the roof Good of eye. the centralized building. This is the only building that's going to be within the final zone. As we talk about that, all that open space, we do see that little tunnel that Tony is trying to use. Coming to him, Matei and Durango. They're going to try to use any kind of cover possible here. I like but that again, Tony. one more building. Uh, and, and, and eventually, people want that build. They're going to have to fight for it as the final zone is coming in. AHP, they want to they wanna get them out. They're in a terrible position at the moment. Awful. So eventually, they will have to fight out of it. They've got to climb. They've got to fight. I'm sweating. I'm not even playing. They've got to have sweat pouring off their brow right now. <laughs> as though the zone wasn't enough. The environment, the zone, the enemy players. What do you do? They've got to do something. Hide in this bush. He's not going to solve their problems. 
Well, 27 seconds. They'll be forced to move a little bit earlier. Eventually, they might have to take a little bit of tick damage and try and, and hopefully they're hoping that the team in the building is going to rotate first. So this way, they'll be able to sandwich them in. It's not a winning play. It's not, it's not a play that's going to net them a first place, but it will net them better than fourth place if that team does rotate before AHP do. Meanwhile, TDM, even though they don't have any cover whatsoever, you notice that that circle is pushing towards them the latest. So they have the best positioning right now in this tunnel. It doesn't, look, it doesn't look that great, but they have cover that they can work with. They're the ones that are in the centralized cent cent uh, the center of the zone, and teams got to rotate towards them. It doesn't look that good in on the surface, but TDM right now have the best positioning, in my opinion. For sure. If you see an envelope that says it's got money in it, make sure you open the envelope and have a look because right now they are beneath the surface. They have such a good position and you're right. It's a concrete fortress and it is working to defy and deflect any cover that comes by them along with the caustic util. This is, this is big brain. I know a lot of people are wondering why they dropped that mobile respawn beacon. All their players are alive, but it's just more cover that they're going to use in this scenario here. That mobile respawn beacon, you can't shoot through it. So it's just more cover that they're trying to create as round six hill is finally closing in. Oh. So they're going to try to use every last bit of that of that circle coming Smoke. in. Smoke all the way out. AHP are going to advance squads. forward. It looks like that team did advance forward before them, so they wiped them out quick. Going down to three squads, the bubble is down to try to create some kind oh, of the temporary shreds. cover and the Devo that's why they say NBA no Devo's allowed because it is this Rah. strong Garou taking out yet another one but Garou gonna go down, down to two. leaving Seraph by himself and eventually NDA having all the advantages in the world I'm night, sorry, night. TDM having all the advantages in the world like I said before it didn't look like the best positioning but if you look at where it was on the map Everybody had to funnel towards them and all the rest of the teams were kind of stuck on top of each other and they just simply take advantage of it. If it's a rock, if it's a jeep, if it's a tree, anything is possible here at the, the World Sighted Rumble. Use it for your cover, make it work and get it done. NDA, multiple I want to say inspiring performances so far today. They weren't gifts. They weren't just given with a player running in the open. It was pure raw earned frags today as we go through these replays and just so much to to admire in the server yeah great plays coming out of them and they, they really deserve that win like like we said before just waiting and it's, it's you have to have the gun skill you really do you can teach gun skill you can get better with gun skill but awareness and apex iq that's a lot harder to gain and they just simply they just simply knew exactly when they wanted to be for that final circle and at that point it was all about execution that was the chess game that yes. we were talking about before and uh tdm just played it so well adaptations uh, all, all game long and to get to this point to to make sure they got that dub so so very well earned and if you're wondering at home like how do you get a w you've seen multiple different paths to get in that but the big questions i think as we scroll through these replays is uh as all the production do the the math behind the scenes who is going to be going through today number two big big questions and uh we'll get back to you on that in the meantime though what was your favorite moment of the day i've got one in mind and uh i think for me it's it's going to be team faith just the place they had today i've taken so much from that what was your favorite play for the day i've got a couple more but uh what, what's on your mind i think i think it's all about i think i think it was all about really the plays that were made in, in game number one and game number two we saw that we saw coming out of two different teams and we saw Lobby A and Lobby B. It was the same thing. You know, we had Team Girl absolutely yes, wreaking team havoc. But then it was NDA coming out of nowhere and just waiting for the right moment to strike. I thought that was really well played. Because if, hey, if you can't beat them in, the, in that gun skill in the 3v3, you know what you can do? You really can You really can outsmart and out, and out IQ or out, out position your enemy team. That's exactly what they did. We saw the same thing in Lobby B as well. One team wreaking havoc and then just another team waiting for the right moment to strike strike and third party situation that's what all it has really what apex is about so yeah. i would say I, I, asking for a moment i just think it's moments moments of brilliance and even this like and even that. this moment right here where you have the entire tdm squad they got into their god spot they, they, they from experience and from knowing that where these circles are going to be going and predicting them they were able to pick this spot even though it doesn't look like the greatest and wait for the rest of the teams to funnel on into them and for them to strike and steal 
away a win. I think it was just multiple moments and the patience coming out of all these teams to be able to steal out a win. It's really, it, you know, it's easier to run through lobbies and use your gun skill to be able to get, add a lot of kill points to the lobby, but it's even harder to allow your positioning and your patience to steal away wins. Unwinnable odds combined with aim gods. You saw it all here today. We saw great positioning. We saw zonal use. We saw just the wackiest frags. A lot of air frags as well. Just players trying to get away with the Valkyrie ability. But nah, uh, uh Not on these players. Watch. Okay, this is the moment we've been waiting for. The Jack World Side Rumble Day 1 Summary. Take it away, Tony. What are we looking at? I mean, you're looking right off the bat, two teams, not just one, two teams able to break the triple digits. Ooh. Team Faith with 111 taking the number one spot on a Lobby B and TDM literally right behind them at 105. And a large reason was that big win that we saw in game six, literally just uh, before the break here. So two teams able to break it to triple digits is absolutely huge. And then you have free agent hybrid theory and AH AHP able to round out your final five and all the way to 10, ending out with fire 21 points, just three above you too easy the more that these tournaments occur here at tgs the more competitive they get the more players more teams that we're seeing reoccurring we saw some familiar faces we saw some new faces from lobby a and lobby b as well a team we didn't mention was space liquid just all day they were going right in to an opponent's face getting this close and saying we're having a fight here do you want to fight no choice we're going to make that fight happen that kind of gunplay tomorrow i think is really going to bring some some good viewership and uh it's going to get even better as uh, as those 20 teams go through yeah we've seen we've seen who are the you know the best of the best who the cream of the crop is from both of these lobbies and now we're going to find out what happens when we combine them together we're talking you know the likes of team faith going up against the likes of team girl space liquid when all these teams start to come together it's going to be an absolute melting pot and with and one one thing that comes off the rip i mean sorry at least in my mind is mm -hmm. it's not going to be as fast i think no. the gameplay is going to really slow down tomorrow because we're going to see a lot more respect out of all of these squads that are in the lobby yeah you said about a game of chess earlier on i think chess checkers you imagine that for tomorrow for the early build up before that momentum really starts to come into full swing yes indeed methodical big brain we had one iq today i'm expecting a thousand iq tomorrow plenty more action coming into your hands from the Jacklin's World Side Rumble. Also, we are going to have uh, someone else join us tomorrow on the Carson desk. It's going to be Dia. If you're anything in Apex North America, you'll know who Dia is. Bring in his awesome pipes to the Carson desk and uh, add into the hype going towards that 5K. Tony, that's it for day number one, brother. Uh, what? What's your summary? What's uh, What's your takeaway? My takeaway is there's so much talent coming in for the lion's share, that $4,500 prize pool, and we're going to see them all leave it on the line here tomorrow where we bring both of these teams together uh, on Why Not Be Reckless, aka Why Not Be Cast Out. Kind of a freaking big deal. If you don't know, now you know. Uh, I, do, <laughs> I do some of the uh, commentary for HGS on Halo, but a lot of you guys know I love me some Apex and play, play ranked literally every single he night. Does. I love commentating it even more if you guys want to catch me you can find me on twitter or you can find me streaming every day 10 o'clock in the morning every single morning without a hitch couple where can they find you well it is at couple frank on all socials i'm not as much on the consistency as this fella but uh <laughs> i will be very very soon at cup on all socials at one to be reckless sky is an absolute demon and, and these two demons will see you in the final day here of the jack Lutz world side rumble a feature a Brits legends brought to you by tds thank you production you're fantastic and viewers as well thanks for being here we'll see you tomorrow peace jack links presents messing with sasquatch watch this <laughs> don't mess with other snacks choose jack links jerky made with 100 percent beef
Jack Lynx presents Messing with Sasquatch. Watch this. Don't mess with other snacks. Choose Jack Lynx jerky made with 100% beef.